Well, it's Friday night in early September, and that can mean only one thing. High school football on Inside Cable is back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Alongside Lee Handel, I'm Dan Gaddy out at E.L. Donaldson Stadium, where tonight the Warren Central Dragons have invaded Purple Territory and are trying to pick up a W on the road. And really, Lee, for Warren Central, this all starts with their field general, Gabe Forrester. It really does. Gabe Forrester is going to have to have a great game tonight. He's got three guys he likes to throw to, especially Michael Cowles, a senior. But he's also got two underclassmen in Leroy Wilson, a junior, and Lionel DeWalt, a sophomore. So we got to see what he's going to do here tonight. Of course, the defense for Bowling Green, the key for this team, their all-state linebacker, Brad Booker. Bowling Green likes to come out in a 5-2, and what you know about a 5-2 is your linebackers do all the work. That's exactly what Brad Booker does. Booker likes to clog up that middle and get those tailbacks where it hurts them. If Warren Central's going to do anything tonight, they're going to have to definitely get around Brad Booker. All right, so we'll wait and see what happens. The Dragon looking to end an eight-game losing streak to the Purples. Kickoff is next. Warren Central won the toss, deferred to the second half, and on the ensuing kickoff goes out of bounds. So Bowling Green will take over to get it started, Lee, with pretty good field position. That's right. Kick went out of bounds, sailed just, just to the to the right, and it looks like uh, Bowling Green going to start out with or Warren Central, Bowling Green going to start out with good field position. Okay, well, let's go ahead and set that Bowling Green offense for you. They will run three running backs, Aaron Johnson, Terrell Green, and Anthony Rhodes in the backfield. Of course, the quarterback, Kyle Sledge, a 6'1", 187-pound senior. Across the line, they have Brad Booker, Malcolm Bailey, Andrew Roan, Junior Flood, Brad Soul, David Reynolds, and Evan Walker. Here we go. First play from scrimmage. No time off the clock, of course, because the kick went out of bounds. Bowling Green coming to the line, setting up in an eye formation. Sledge gives off to Johnson. Johnson up the middle. Got about two or three on that carry, Lee. Great tackle there by number 59. Uh, looks like that was, um, I believe that was Nick Nick Corley. Yeah, Nick Conley. Nick Conley, I'm sorry. A sophomore. Good pursuit. Gets the tackle. So it'll be second down and eight to go for the Purples. That was a great read by Conley coming from the other side to plug up the hole. The Dragons putting five guys up on the line of scrimmage. Sledge going double wide. On the pass, incomplete. Throw looked a little behind him. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if he misread the route or Sledge just threw it wide, but miscommunication. One there. of those issues that you want to get worked out early in the season looked like it was a timing pattern, and of course the timing just off a little bit. The pass to Aaron Johnson sails wide. If you're going to beat a, a very quick Warren Central team, you definitely have to get your communication down, and you definitely have to get the ball in the hands of your receivers. Third down, eight to go now for the Purples. Sledge getting everyone set, steps up under center, dropping back to pass, getting some pressure. He's going to roll now, looking to throw. Nowhere to go. He gets brought down right around the line of scrimmage, so that'll bring up a fourth down. The Warren Central defense holds, and Bowling Green will have to punt. That was a great move by number 53. Um... I'm not sure if he was a uh, game day starter, but that was Brandon Lamberson, the 5'11", 190-pound senior. So we didn't get a chance to set the Warren Central defense for you. We'll do it the next time they come on the field. The Dragons send two guys deep to return. Desmond Harris, of course, you got to watch out for him, the junior halfback. And there's a flag on the snap. Looks like someone might have been moving early. Number 26, Matt Hardenberg, back to kick for Bowling Green. Watching him in the in the in the warmups before the game, got a real strong leg and uh, looks to uh, pin Warren Central hopefully deep. But so that we'll, that penalty right there so is going to we'll hurt back, Bowling Green. We'll back the ball up five more yards for Bowling Green. We'll try it again now. Fourth and 13, snapping the ball off their own 32-yard line. Getting ready to punt. Not really a great punt, but he got a good rotation. He's got a decent bounce. Ball goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Dragons of Warren Central. Looked like Hardenberg had a little trouble handling the snap, didn't get the laces around correctly, and just shanked it off the side of his foot. And Lee, one of the things that I noticed during warm-ups is it looks like these Bowling Green kickers are wearing some unique shoes. 
Maybe that has something to do with the rain earlier today, although the field looks like it's in good shape. The field does look like it's in good shape, but you always want to take those precautions. Hardenberg probably going to go with a little bit thicker cleats on those, probably going to go to an inch and a half or so, but that we'll see how that plays out during the rest of the game. Trips to the near side. Quarterback sneak. Bowling Green not really expecting that. Gabe Forrester, interesting call to come out. I'm not exactly sure why you do that. I guess he wants to show Booker that uh, he's not scared of him, wants to go right after him. Speaking but of Booker, he did make the tackle on that play. Let's go ahead and set the Warren Central offense for you. At halfback, number two, Desmond Harris. Well, James Shannon will also be in the backfield. Then working around, Gabe Forrester, the quarterback, Michael Coles, and Leroy Wilson, the two receivers. Lanelle DeWalt, Josh Oates, Philip Myers, Todd Kitchens, Jason Rigsby, and Ryan Jeffries work out the lineup. And you see right there a couple more yards on the carry. That time, Desmond Harris. I'm not exactly sure why Desmond Harris tried to run over the line because that's exactly what he did. He, he appeared to jump over the line. Uh, he ran right into the Bowling Green defense. And we're going to see right here how, uh, how strong that Bowling Green defense really is. Third and about, looks like about four. It is third and four to go. That Bowling Green defense featuring a five-man front, David Reynolds, Quinn Williams, Victor Coleman, Junior Flood, Jay Bradford. Of course, cornerbacks Chris Butts and Jan Waddle, Brad Booker and Ches Brinkley in the middle. We'll set the rest of it for you in a minute. Forrester rolling, tucks it away. He's going to try to run for the first down. He's got it and out of bounds. First and ten coming up for the Dragons. Great job by Forrester showing that he's got a lot of speed around that end, and he can use his legs as Kyle Sledge does for the Bowling Green team. Forrester made a nice move, watching the defense, saw that there was nobody in front of him right there, and he just pushed it around that left side and got the first down. And nice Lee, job by Forrester. Lee, credit that left side of the offense, Josh Oates and Philip Myers for Warren Central getting out there, getting the blocks, stealing off that corner that let Forrester run for that first down. That's exactly what Warren Central's got to do to stop this team, including Booker, who's got great speed himself. So the Dragons will step to the line now. First and ten at their own 45. Hand off the ball to Harris. Harris got some room. He broke it in the secondary. Try to wrap him up. Finally brought down Aaron Johnson making the tackle. Great job accelerating, getting through the line of scrimmage. That was a really good move by Harris to get onto the outside. Looked like a regular sweep. Can't cut inside his, his uh, last player there on the end on the left side. And when I was watching the Monroe County game, the first game for Bowling Green, they seemed to have a little bit of trouble tackling. That's exactly what you saw there. They couldn't grab him up, and Harris got to the outside and was able to break it for a, for a, a big game. The Dragons bringing it right to Bowling Green. Going to try to set up the run, a little play action now. Forrester rolling out, nowhere to throw it. He's going to tuck it and run. Gets inside the 10-yard line. Another big pickup for Warren Central. Lee, it looks like they're having no trouble at all moving the ball right now against Bowling Green. It seems like Forrester is almost calling these plays himself to run the bootleg around the side. Of course, he's not, as you can see. But Forrester's got great speed. If Now, if Warren Central wants to roll out and throw the bomb, you've got to be looking to hurt them where they are because you've got to think that Bowling Green's going to be coming up to stop Forrester running around that end. Well, Forrester did pick up the first down on that play, so it'll be first and goal to go at the nine-yard line. Lee, if you're Warren Central, what are you looking to do now to get the ball in the end zone? I think you've got to pass to your tall guys. You've got Lionel DeWalt uh, and Leroy Wilson, who are both really tall guys. DeWalt staying 6'5". Wilson's at 6-4. I think you want to go to a post pattern, and that's exactly what we're looking at right there on the left side. Instead, they go up the middle. Four, three or four yards on that play. Shane Green, the 5'11 junior, takes the handoff. Set up second down. Brad Booker right there on the tackle, showing that he's a good run stopper. They're going to need him right here because this red zone is where Bowling Green's got to hold. you got to hold him to at least three points here. You're going to need strong play out of your cornerbacks and you need strong play up front. We'll see right here, but Booker's got to play an important role right here in the red zone. Booker, of course, the defensive captain for this team, calling, getting the signals from the sideline, gets his defense set. Some substitutions now for Warren Central. They're going to be a little late breaking out of this huddle. Looks like Desmond Harris coming back in the game. With Harris coming back in, you got to think maybe they're looking to punch this one in on the ground. That's what it looks like. They're going to set up in the eye formation with the strong side or wide receiver to the right side, but it looks like a run. Dead. Forrester tucks it away. Has it knocked out of bounds? Fumbled. Let's see how they spot it. It's the fumble, be... goes, fumble goes out of bounds at the one-yard line. Forrester kind of hit out of nowhere. 
That was a great tackle by, uh, I'm not sure that appeared to be Booker. I'm not sure, but that was a great job. Uh, that's kind of like an accident right there from Forster to fumble out of bounds. But Bowen Green going to have to stop him right here on the one-yard line, third well, down. Big play early in the game, eight minutes, 14 seconds to go. Opening drive for the Dragons. It's third and goal on the one-yard line. Looks like we got Lonel DeWalt coming back in the game. Harris gets the carry, goes in, untouched, touchdown Dragons, six to nothing, they jump on top early. That's a great play by the left-hand side of the Warren Central offensive line. Great job getting Harris in, and I could have drove a Mack truck through that hole. Well, Lee, I tell you what, the Dragons really looking impressive on their opening drive. You're exactly right. They're having no problems running it around the end. If you stay away from Booker, you're not going to have that trouble. Bowling Green not as quick as the as the tailbacks for Warren Central, and Warren Central showing why they were a top 10 preseason team. So on to attempt the extra point now. Kick gets blocked. Booker right there in the middle, blocking the extra point, so the score remains 6 to nothing, Dragons. The senior, uh, number 16, Daniel Poppy, looked like he didn't even get the kick up that high. It looked really low, looked like it could have hit the line, but you can't take that chance. That's why he sent Booker in there to stop that. Well, as we mentioned, Warren Central trying to stop an eight-game losing streak to Bowling Green. Off to a great start. Now we'll have to see how their defense can respond and really how the offense of Bowling Green fights back. That's exactly what I was going to get at. I'm really anxious to see how Bowling Green handles this quick Warren Central defense. Bowling Green likes to come out in a triple option style, usually runs a rotation of three running backs, if not three on the field at all times. Uh, they like to run the strong power eye, weak power eye. They can run a T formation. Bowling Green's got so many ways to run that option at you, and Sledge can throw, too. <laughs> so Bowling Green setting up to receive the kick. Back deep is Aaron Johnson, the senior, 5'10", 175 pounds. Now Warren Central will break, and they're going to get things ready to go. Daniel Poppy's got it all teed up, going to mark it off, and we're ready to play football again with eight minutes, nine seconds to go in the first quarter play. It's six to nothing, the Dragons of Warren Central in front. you got to think uh, there's a lot of emotion in this game. Inter-county battle, as we said in early, and that looks like that kickoff just sailed wide again. Well, you know, we noticed that at the opening kickoff, Poppy sailed it out of bounds to the left side. He does it again. Could it be that they just don't want to give Bowling Green a chance to return? I'm not sure, but it sure looked like he didn't want to there. I'm not sure. I think I'd rather pin him deep than uh, give him the ball to 35. But like I was saying earlier, you got two teams here from the same county, both ranked in the top ten in the preseason. Uh, Warren Central was tenth, Bowling Green fourth. And there's, got, there's a lot riding on this game. Uh, you want to see who your early favorites are, and hopefully a team can get in there and uh, play a great game against teams like uh, Owensboro and uh, the Fort Thomas Highlands. Sledge. Handing the ball off to his fullback. Fumble! Warren Central has it on the fumble. Boy, the ball just popped loose right there to pick it up. Michael Cowles, the nose guard for the Dragons. Huge break for Warren Central. I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like just a great, great hit up the middle. Michael Cowles showing, you know, senior leadership right there, being well alert of where the ball was as it fell right into his hand. Boy, and as a big defensive lineman, you don't get that opportunity too often to pick up the ball. He made the most of it right there, was able to hang on and recover the ball for his team. Warren Central really has to capitalize here, get up strong on Bowling Green. As we see, as we saw last week and the week before, this Bowling Green team, well capable of scoring points. 41 last week against Greenwood is evidence enough. So Warren Central looking to pad their 6-0 lead, coming to the line. High formation, strong side near us. Uh, Forrester faking the handoff, keeps it for himself, running for about eight yards. Another nice pickup on an outside run. This is this is a, a great addition to Forrester's game, showing great senior knowledge of the field, good field presence. Knows enough that he saw the strong side come over come over to the right hand side. Forrester looked up to see if the pass was there, and then went ahead and went around like the play was designed. Great job, picked up about seven on that play. Well, tonight's officials, the referee, Bill Park, umpire Jerry Bush. Of course, they're joined by John Stately, Robert Sparks, and Dana Davis. The Dragons coming back to the field, snap it again. Handoff goes to the middle. Nothing. 
absolutely nothing on that play. Bowling Green swarming all over the ball. Looks like the junior, uh, junior Flood, putting the junior and junior right there. Flood with a nice tackle up the middle, and he's going to be really good. He's going to be a cog in this defense next year as he becomes a senior. Just a junior right now, but showing great poise right there. Well, that one goes for a loss of two. It'll be third down and four for the Dragons. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Warren Central already ahead, six to nothing on the strength of an opening drive that was really just magnificent. Yeah, it was great driving. They got a build right here. If they're going to keep that confidence high, they're going to have to convert right here. Quick snaps. Forrester on the quarterback keeper, fighting for a second effort. It's going to be close to the first down. We'll see how they spot it. Forrester went right up the middle saying, his coach over there saying, you know, you got to go for it right here. I'm not sure why he called that play. He does get the first down, as we see. I'm not sure. I, I, if it was me over there, I wouldn't be doing that. But a great, a great play call as, as Bowling Green had no chance of wrapping him up and as he spun off of the, on the side and reached for the first down. That's why we're up here in the booth, fella. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so Warren Sitzel does keep the drive alive. They move the chains. First and 10 now. Bowling Green trying to find some way to stop down this dragon attack. Warren Central back inside the 25, right where Bowling Green doesn't want him. Handoff goes to Desmond Harris. Harris on the outside gets wrapped up and brought down on the far side of the field. Pickup of about five or six. Sets up second down. Good job of the tackling out, uh, out there on the outside. Bowling Green going to have to show some quickness to either side of the field. They're going to have to be able to run to either side to uh, hold this very fast Warren Central team as we've seen so far. So as we said, it'll be second down and five to go when Warren Central comes back to the line. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first quarter of play on a what's turned into a really nice evening out here at Bowling Green High School. Yeah. Dragons coming up to the field now, set in the eye formation, snapping the pitch outside. Desmond Harris to the left side again. Fighting, fighting, going to come up a yard or two short for the first down. The initial hit was made, it looked by Junior Flood, and then a great, a great hit on there. Looks like that was number, I believe number 16, um, Chaz Brinkley, the uh, sophomore linebacker. So good gang tackling right here on this draft. Bowling Green trying to keep the Central Dragons from scoring again. It's third and short now, third and two. What kind of call do you make? Well, it appears that I've been wrong the last two times. It's been on third down. So uh, I think if you're if you're Warren Central, you want to fake the run and uh, look deep. But it looks like they've got uh, number 80, uh, Leroy Wilson out they pack there. Pack it inside. Give it to Shane Green. Green trying to pick up the first down. We'll wait and see how it's spotted. It looks like he they may have it. it. Of course they run it. They must be listening to us up here. Yes, they do have the first down lead, but one thing to keep in mind, the Dragons have been able to establish a running game early and haven't had to rely on the pass. That's exactly right. I mean, I, I figured Warren Central would be a little bit more of a passing team. Forster's got a great arm, but the rest of them have great legs too. So Forster's getting it done on the ground right here, and that's got to open up the passing game later on. Dragons inside the red zone again. Of course, both teams with only one loss on the season, two quality clubs, an inter-county battle, Warren Central at Bowling Green. Four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter of play. This time, Forrester faking the, faking the handoff and rolling outside. No blockers out there for him. And he goes down right about at the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost one or two. Bowling Green not faked at all on that play. Uh, good job wrapping up Forrester there on the bootleg. It is second down and nine, so a gain of about one on the play. And it looks like we're going to have our first time out of the game. Maybe some confusion over there on the Dragon sideline. You don't want to turn the ball over. Definitely not, especially in the red zone where Bowling Green is usually very potent. Uh, they held Greenwood to zero points last week in a shellacking 41 to nothing. And, uh, you know, I think uh, if you're Bowling Green right here, if you want to get your confidence back, get the momentum at your own field back, you've got to get a stop here. You need to hold them to at least three points, hopefully none, and get a turnover. Uh, but Warren Central showing great speed. They're running the field both ways. I mean, you see uh, Desmond Harris, who's got legs for weeks, and uh, 
Gabe Forster is doing a great job of uh, faking the pass and taking the run. Well, the first of plenty of quality ball games to come your way this year on Insight Communications High School Football. Next week will be at Greenwood for a matchup there. The Gators and Warren East going to hook up. The following week, Warren East at Warren Central, then Warren Central and Greenwood. Three other games to come later on in the season. All those replays can be uh, can be caught on the on the Monday following the games at 8.30 p.m. We hope you tune in and watch them all. The Dragons coming back to the line of scrimmage. Second down, nine to go. Three minutes, 58 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Out of the eye formation. Forrester looking to throw Booker all over him. Tons of pressure. Forrester, nothing really to do other than roll out of the pocket and throw that ball away. Booker and Flood are imposing just on the line. Right there you saw Forrester scrambling from those two both. And uh, all you can do right there is dump it off and try and uh, get back to the line of scrimmage. And you know, Lee, that's the kind of defense Coach Wallace is looking for from his from his linebackers and his experienced guys in the middle. Oh, definitely. If you got a D1 prospect like you have in Booker right there, you got to be expecting him to be the leader of the defense. you got to get pressure on that quarterback, make him throw bad passes, or make him dump it off to waste it down. Third down and nine. Warren, Warren Central looking to score another touchdown and open this one up in the first quarter play. Forrester going underneath. On the pass route, pass is dropped. Pass is dropped. Lonel DeWalt crossing across the middle, just couldn't hang on to the ball. Looks like that was number 19, Chris Butts, coming over to make the hit. It appeared that DeWalt had made the catch, but, but Butts hit him so hard that he dropped it, and we have a flag now. Yeah, Lee, late flag. Looks like somebody might have said something down there. We'll try to get it sorted out. The officials right now talking with the Bowling Green players. It didn't look like there was anyone from Central in the area. Let's see what they call. We got an unsportsmanlike penalty against the purple, so I guess the officials just warning everyone to keep the tempers down. Of course, a big game like this, that could become a problem. I got to tell you, any unsportsmanlike penalty is just stupid, and especially when you're inside the 20-yard line where Warren Central has shown that they're very potent. That's just a, a big mental mistake for uh, the Bowling Green defense. Yeah, and the other, uh, the other kick in the face there would have been third down instead it's going to be first and goal for the Dragons, who have already put the ball in the end zone. And they can, they're going to get four more cracks at it. Well, check that. Apparently, it's going to be fourth down. I think it's because the penalty was after the play was already called down. They're going to go ahead and kick the field goal. Okay, so Poppy comes in, puts it up, right through the uprights. No problem that time. Plenty of arch. And the Warren Central Dragons own a 9 nothing lead over the Purples of Bowling Green. Three minutes, 43 seconds to go in the first quarter play. Great job there by Bowling Green with the exception of that last penalty to hold the Warren Central offense to just a field goal. They need to keep that up, play strong defense, and play the width of the field in order to stop these quick Dragons. Lee, another important factor to look at here early. Warren Central, after the turnover, able to convert it into some points. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, Bowling Green is really going to have to limit their turnovers. they got to hold on to the ball, make sure they see where the defenders are, good communication, and you'll get the job done. Here we'll see uh, if the Bowling Green offense can finally get something going. Well, before the offense gets a chance to take over, Poppy's going to kick off another ball. He's already sailed two to the left, and he's had an extra point blocked. So we'll see now. He found the center of the field on the field goal. <laughs> Let's see if he can put it down the middle and give Bowling Green a chance to return the ball. Once again, back to return for the Purples, Aaron Johnson. Nine to nothing, your score. Warren Central out in front, three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Again, aiming for that left corner. The up back will take it. Four Bowling Green. He's got some room, gets to the outside. Now looking to Baker tackle, doesn't happen. Great tackle and pursuit right there for the Dragons. Looks like that was number 24, Anthony Rhodes. No, check that. That was number 24, C.J. Sullivan, the 5'9 sophomore on the reception, showing great great movement, great lateral movement on the field as he gets that up to about, looks to appear the 38. But, yeah, finally uh, Poppy found the middle of the field there, or at least a Bowling Green uh, <laughs> receiver to kick to. Well, Lee, we finally have a chance to do this. Let's set the Warren Central defense for you. Brandon Lamberson, Michael Cowles. Chris Lockhart up front on the three-man front. Casey Dye and Lonel DeWalt are the two ends. The linebackers are Nick Conley and Kevin Fishburne. 
And then we'll set the rest of the lineup for you. Wait a minute. Movement up front. Everybody for Bowling Green not on the same page that time. Looks like that was number 30, uh, David Reynolds, the senior tight end there uh, who jumped. And dead ball, false start against Bowling Green. So Bowling Green kind of shooting themselves in the foot here with penalties early. It's first and 15 to go. Before we forget, let's finish setting the Warren Central defense for you. The two quarterbacks, James Shannon and Desmond Harrison. And at safety, Leroy Wilson and Max Caravay. I think I got that right. We'll go with it. Bowling Green comes to the line. First and 15 in the offset formation. Pitches it to the outside. Not a whole lot there. Good pursuit from the Dragons. Nothing for Aaron Johnson. I got to tell you, this Warren Central defense, and there's another flag another, thrown. Yeah, another late flag right over here next to the purple sideline. Of course, the official pointing to Warren Central. We'll see what the call is. It might have been a face mask at the end of that play. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, that looked, That's definitely against Warren Central, though. No, unsportsmanlike conduct. So two unsportsmanlike conducts early in the game. The official's doing a nice job taking care and setting the tone, saying we're not going to put up with this. That's, that's exactly what we're talking about in the beginning of the game. Tempers run high when you get two teams who are as close. I mean, right down Scottsville Road from each other, it seems. And uh, these two guys know each other, play basketball against each other, as you've seen here on Insight before. And uh, tempers flare sometimes. And, you know, as a coach, you know, you got to limit that, but you also like it. Bowling Green quick to the line, first down after the penalty. Johnson in motion, triple option. Hands it off up the middle to the fullback. And he breaks through the line for a few yards that time to Rel Green. And once again, another flag comes in after the play. It appears like the uh, it, it appeared that the Warren Central defender uh, just just uh, just stupid fouls. I mean, you you can't afford this. You already give up the first down, and then you're going to attack, you know, 10, 15 more yards at the end of that. It just doesn't make sense to me, Dan. Well, the Dragons have looked so good offensively to start this game. Of course, the defense on the first play from scrimmage, uh, I'm sorry, first series forced the punt. In the second series, on that first play, forced the turnover, and really looked sharp. But now. The mental aspect of the game coming into play, another 15-yard penalty is going to put Bowling Green in great situation here. First and 10 on the 25-yard line. This is where your seniors have to step up. They have to show good leadership, get their guys to calm down and concentrate on the game. We'll see what Sledge can do. It appears that he's making good plays up the middle, great running by the running backs also. High formation for Bowling Green. Sledge snapping the ball, fakes the handoff, going to keep it out. Turns outside, Sledge working for some yards, gets a couple. <laughs> Lee, you're not going to believe this. On the far side of the field, the official just dropped yet another flag. We'll wait and see what this one is. That was a great tackle, though, by number two, Desmond Harris, also the running back on offense. So three plays in a row now. We've had flags. This one, a personal foul. Clipping penalty against Bowling Green, so they're going to give back 15 of those yards. Yeah, you just can't afford to have these these penalties. And we've seen a lot of yellow here in the uh, in the opening uh, portion of this quarter. And uh, I mean, if you're Bowling Green here, you gotta, you know, you've got this far. Why would you go ahead and, and tax them off in the in the wrong direction? You gotta be smart out there. Yeah, both teams showing a lack of intelligence on the field. This is gonna back Bowling Green up pretty good. Makes it about first and 20 to go. Back on the 35-yard line. And, and uh, Lee Bowling Green, they are wasting no time back in the huddle. You see them coming out. Strong side here to the near form, to the near side. Option, there it goes up the middle again. Nothing. Nothing at all. Terrell Green, Bowling Green really having a tough job getting, uh, having a difficult time getting the run game. Established. Great job there by the senior Michael Cowles to wrap up uh, Aaron Johnson there. And uh, it appeared that Warren Central wasn't uh, wasn't stymied at all by the uh, the revert or the option. Of course, the option a staple of this Bowling Green defense. They're going to line up now with trips to the far side, and one man in the backfield. Sledge back to pass, getting a little bit of pressure. He's going to scramble. Looks has a guy wide open in the middle of the field. Picks it up. With the catch, yes, that is a catch. Aaron Johnson picking up some good yards on a long second down play for the Purples. Great job by Sledge to recognize his field. He didn't take off immediately, had a couple defenders in front of him, but instead throws long to Sledge, 
or throws sledge throws long to Johnson, and they get back a lot of those yards. And it looks like it's going to be about third and two instead of third and long. It is third and two. Minute and 50 seconds to go in the first quarter of place. Nine to nothing our score. Warren sits right out in front. Motion in the backfield for Bowling Green. Handoff goes up the middle. We'll see if they got the first down or not. Depending on the spot, yes, it will be a first down. So first and 10, Bowling Green, after the 15-yard clipping play, able to recover and pick up a first down and keep the drive alive. Nice shot by Terrell Green to find that spot and hit the hole hard just to get the first down. Now they've got great field position inside the 20-yard line, and let's see what this potent Bowling Green offense can do here. I formation again now. Two men in the backfield. Anthony Rhodes on the tail. Handoff goes right up the middle. Terrell Green, nice pickup. Gets about 9 or 10 to set up second down. Or maybe more. Looks like that was Looks a like senior, number 40, Kevin Fishburn on the tackle just to save the touchdown. Pretty good spot for the Purples. It'll be first and goal now at the three-yard line. Minute 28 to go in the first quarter play. Bowling Green trying to strike back and pull up almost even. Sleds now faking the handoff. No, he does give off. Up the middle. Puts down Purples. Terrell Green. <laughs> and there's Wait. more yellow. Yeah, more yellow on the flag. Another flag comes down after the play. You've got to think this is going to be an unsportsmanlike uh, penalty. We'll wait and see. Great job, though, by Sledge to fake. It looked just like he had half, at least half of the defense faked. Now the officials discussing the call here. Might have been something going on during the play, possibly a hold. The touchdown could come back. Taking a, taking a little bit to discuss this one. Um, he's probably just well, checking to see what the rules are. Here comes the signal. We think here comes the signal. Yes, now we're going to get it. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike penalty against Bowling Green, so the touchdown will stand. That makes it 6-9, to nine, Bowling Green. But, Lee, as we said, again, really just in that series, marred by the penalties. Really, if you're, if you're either Warren Central or the Bowling Green coach, you've got to get these guys to settle down and get in a zone. They're going to have to play strong ball both ways, and just adding penalties to this just hampers it. Adam Mercer to tack on the extra point. Gets it away through the uprights and good. Seven to nine, now your score. A two-point lead for the Dragons of Warren Central with a minute and 15 to go in the first quarter play. Great job by Bowling Green to get down the field. Uh, did a good job scoring there. That's what, they go that's what they're going to have to do to keep that confidence up. Keep the ball moving, keep the ball going forward instead of backwards. You know, at least so often you see after a team scores, your team commits a turnover and gives up another score the team has a tendency to kind of lose some of that momentum and some of that fire under their drive. A big momentum boost for Bowling Green to get the ball down the field and in the end zone. You're exactly right. A lot of times when you see a, a big, strong matchup like this, you'll see one team really calm and in control and the other team kind of scrambling. And you'll get a lot of momentum switches during the game. Here, it appears that it's about even. The first, it appeared in the first part, you know, Warren Central came out really strong, put nine points up on the board, but Bowling Green came right back to, to balance the seesaw, and, it, and they're just within two points right now, so this game's still wide open. So Desmond Harris and James Shannon will drop back to take the punt from Bowling Green. And don't forget now, the unsportsmanlike conduct backs it up. Bowling Green's going to have to kick off from the 25-yard line here. I think we're going to, yeah, we're going to get a new football. Purple's teeing it up. Trailing 9-7 to seven with a minute 15 to go in the first quarter play. Dan Gaddy with Lee Handel at L. Donaldson Stadium. And it's a, been a, a beautiful evening, Lee, for football. Yeah, you're exactly right. But for me, any evening is a good day for football. <laughs> Short kickoff taken by James Shannon. Shannon fumbles the ball. And whistles everywhere. It appears that his knee touched he put, as he yep. picked up the ball. Yeah, he put his knee down when he picked the ball up, so that's where they will spot it. The Dragons take over first and 10 on the 19-yard line. Shannon, maybe a lack of concentration, hurt some of those big purple players heading his way. I'm not sure, but that was a great call by the officials right there to check the spot on, uh, on Shannon's knee. 
Warren Central trying to add some more points onto the field. Here comes Forrester to get his team into motion. If you're Coach Kevin Wallace here for the Bowling Green team, you got to be looking for Booker to make a couple key stops right here, or, or the entire Bowling Green defense for that matter, and get them to punt. That's what you really need to keep this momentum going. Forrester acts like he's going to pass the ball, now takes off up the middle, and he's going to pick up about five yards. Forrester showing no fear of the center of that Bowling Green defense. You're exactly right, and like I was saying earlier, Bowling Green having all kinds of trouble wrapping up the ball carrier. It seemed that he had they had no chance and he could have run for days if not for that last second uh, shoe ta shoestring tackle. But if you're Bowling Green, you have to wrap him up. That's a big strong key in this game. And if you're if you're the Bowling Green defense, you got to be able to get in there, stay confident, and wrap these guys up and hold them from getting any yards. High formation for the Dragons. Two wide receivers to the far side of the field. Handoff goes up the middle. Shane, it's Shane Green. Shane Green gets back to the line of scrimmage and gets stopped there. So we see uh, Lee Warren Central trying to pound that offensive run and keep moving the chain via the run. Great tackle there by Joey Mays. Did a good job. They must be listening to me because that was a <laughs> great wrap-up tackle there uh, by Mr. Mays, the senior. And there's the siren. We'll end our first quarter of play. Your score, Warren Central 9, Bowling Green Purple 7. Lee, what are your thoughts about the first quarter? Well, my thoughts are kind of clouded in yellow right now, <laughs> a yellow haze, if you will. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of flags going on, and you kind of expect this. You got two crosstown rivals playing against each other, maybe getting a little dirty there in the trenches, but, you know, you just got to limit these flags. If you get too many for your team, it's a, it's a huge momentum killer. And, that, and that'll put your team away for the game. You got to stay in control. You got to carry the ball. You got to make sure you get up the field instead of back the other way across the field. And, and penalties are a huge drive killer for, for both teams. Well, Lee, I know you played in several games back in the high school days. Did, were you ever in games like this where you had so many penalties that just kind of slowed down the flow of the game? Oh, definitely. And myself going to Trinity in Louisville, we had those uh, crosstown rival Tigers up there. And uh, that was always a huge game, you know, 30,000-plus uh, fans at the game. And, you know, tempers tend to run high, you know. Crosstown rivals like these two have to be experiencing the same thing. Uh, you know, you got your families out there. You know, you probably know some of the guys on the other side of the ball. And, you know, tempers run run high. You know, you, you get in the trenches and you want to, you know, outplay the other man. But you got to be smart here. You got to be able to move the ball up and down the field. And, and there's no room for these penalties. Uh, while the coaches, I'm sure, appreciate, you know, the, the high octane temper and, you know, getting getting tough out there, you know, you, you can't have unsportsmanlike conducts here. And that's, that's just killing you. So we get set to start the second quarter play. Third and four for Warren Central. Forrester brings his team to the line. Quick snap. Pitches it to the outside. Desmond Harris on the run. Out to the 45-yard line before he gets knocked out of bounds. Big pickup on the outside pitch. Great job by Harris to get to the outside. And, and I got to tell you, the, that play was made huge in part by the, uh, the right-hand side of the Warren Central offensive line. Really strong, a lot of seniors on that line, and did a great job of blocking there so Harris could get around the end. Yeah, Jason Rigsby and Ryan Jeffries out there sealing off that corner, which, of course, allowed Harris to take off running. He really accelerated out of the backfield. Dragons coming back to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to the near side of the field. Forrester going to keep it himself again. Forrester's got plenty of room. There he goes to the 30, the 20. The 10, and the Gus spot him out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds back here at the 16-yard line. Boy, what a break for Bowling Green. Forrester just got outside and broke that ball for a long game, but the secondary of the Purple is able to force him out of bounds at the 16-yard line. That's a good thing he stepped out of bounds because I was just getting ready to get on Aaron Johnson for not wrapping him up. But, yeah, that was a great play by Gabe Forrester. Faked out the entire Bowling Green defense as they had to come from the whole other side of the field. They had trips left to this side. Forrester just turns and runs for days. And that, that's what's so pivotal about his game. He's able to run and he's able to throw. 
Well, Johnson, the do everything man for Bowling Green. Of course, plays free safety, a running back, and returns the kickoffs. The Dragons snatching the ball. Plenty of room that time. Desmond Harris, virtually untouched, goes in from 16 out for the score. Lee, did you see the line, how they opened up that hole for Harris to run through? Once again, as we saw on the, uh, on the short score there earlier, Warren Central's offensive line is doing a great job running to Rigsby and his side over there on the right. Huge hole again. We need to uh, we need to check something here. Apparently, Harris found the sideline on his attempt to get in the end zone. So two touchdowns called back now because the player stepped out of bounds. Great officiating on the sidelines. And this will set up a first and goal at the two-yard line. The Dragons trying to punch it in and extend their lead. You've got to think they're going to stay on the ground right here. Harris lining up in the backfield. It goes to Harris. Harris right up the middle, gets in. There's the touchdown. So Warren Central comes right back after the Bowling Green touchdown, wasting virtually no time, less than two minutes. They get the ball down the field and in the end zone and take a 15-7 lead. One thing you see in a crosstown rivalry like this is there's no intimidation, and that's exactly what Warren Central's got going through their head. You know, you see that you know D1 prospect, Brad Booker, on the other side, but Warren Central's running right at him. They'll run right, and then the next play they'll run left, as you saw there. Two plays to the right side, that touchdown by Harris, right up to the left. Poppy gets ready to take the snap. Kick is up. Kick is good. So the lead now goes 16 to seven. The Dragons reclaiming a nine point lead. And Lee, I want to touch on something that you just mentioned to go. These big games where there's the no intimidation factor. Is that why we're having the all these penalties here in the, in the end of the first quarter of play? Was that kind of each team trying to establish we're the big dogs. We're not scared about you. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you saw right there as Warren Central uh, kept their composure, uh, limited their flags, did a great job moving the ball. If you're Warren Central, you gotta, you got to come in. you got to stay focused. You can't, you can't be intimidated at all. And Warren Central obviously is not, as the scoreboard shows us. But Bowling Green has to show that they aren't intimidated either. They have to come back. Say they can stop these guys on offense, especially with as strong a player as Booker is, and show why they were the preseason number 14. Bowling Green, of course, their only loss coming to 4A Louisville PRP to open up the season. Warren I got to tell you, that's pretty interesting how they shift on the kickoff there. And again, if you notice, Poppy kicking it to the left side of the field. This one snagged out of midair. Run coming. Bowling Green going to start with decent field position again at the 30. Six or 37 yard line. Nice tackle that time by the Dragons getting over there with James Shannon shutting them down. I got to tell you, that was also a great catch by the uh, senior wide receiver who uh, picked up that one. John Moore, the 5'11, 142 pound senior on the nice reception there. Yeah, and, you, and you saw him just a moment ago there on the sidelines trying to gather himself. He got hit pretty hard. Guys flying around the field. The Dragons tonight getting after it on defense. Purples lining up, ready to go. One back in the field, in the backfield. Now they will switch and send two back. Hand off up the middle again. Terrell Green, of course, that's the play that they just had so much success on in the last drive. Terrell Green right up the middle. I got to tell you, in the first game I saw Bowling Green play against Monroe County, Aaron Johnson ran wild on these guys. You're not seeing this early, and that's exactly what happened in the, in the Monroe County game. Johnson got off to a great start, as did Mr. Green. And you're not seeing it here. There's hardly any momentum going for the Bowling Green offense except for that one score. And right here, Warren Central doing a great job tackling. Yeah, now the Dragons with five men up on the line of scrimmage. This time, Sledge pitches it to the outside. Aaron Rhodes trying to get to the corner. Gets cut off after a gain of about six or seven. Great job by Sledge to fake the option and pitch uh, to the outside to uh, Shannon or Rhodes. Uh, but you're going to have to be like that all day. This is third down right here, and Bowling Green needs to convert. And you know the Dragons wanting to force the punt with 10 minutes and 20 seconds to go here in the first half. They've got a nine-point lead. Boy, there would be nothing sweeter for the boys from down at Warren Central if they could stop this and force a punt and put some more points on the board. Sleds under center. Hands off to Johnson. Aaron Johnson busting through for a big four yards. He gets the first down, so Bowling Green does move the chain and keep the drive alive. Great job by Johnson there to keep chugging up the middle. 
And you're going to have to keep getting your first downs in order to get down to that red zone. Kevin Wallace and his purples. We've mentioned it a couple times already. Eight straight wins over Warren Central. They're trying to keep that drive alive. Of course, the Dragons out to prove that, yes, they can beat Bowling Green. Oh, yeah. I think these teams are so evenly matched, it's not even funny. And, and like we said, the emotions have a big part to do with it. Sledge pitches it outside to Johnson. Johnson turns it up the middle. He's got to go. Nobody near him. At the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Aaron Johnson exploding exploding through the line of scrimmage goes a long way 53 yards for the touchdown great job there by Aaron Johnson to get up that middle and that is a huge part to do with the uh, offensive line of Bowling Green they just knocked everybody down their butts and of course Aaron Johnson ran because there was nobody tackling but also you saw there was a lot of downfield blockers for Bowling Green did a good job of uh, preventing a or for making a hole for Johnson to run through. So great job by the entire team on that. And as you just mentioned, Aaron Johnson really hadn't gotten on track. Now maybe he's got things going. The extra point sails through. Your score now reads Warren Central Dragons 16, the Purples of Bowling Green 14. Mr. Johnson, get yourself a drink of water. You just earned it. An excellent run to pull this game back to within two. I got to tell you, I kind of expected this to be such a high-octane offensive game because last week we saw uh, both the Bowling Green Purples blitz Greenwood for 41 points and shut them out, as did Warren Central. They tackled on a, a tough Breckenridge County team and shut them out with 36 points of offense on their, on their team. So this could be a, a huge offensive game for both teams as we saw Johnson run with the uh, huge offensive play right there. Well, there's nothing better than the 100-point four-hour game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're on defense. Oh, man. Tell you what, you get in those games, and there is no defense. We've got a good one going right here, though. Nine minutes, 34 seconds to go in the opening half of play. 16 to 14, the Dragons of Warren Central out in front. Bowling Green kicks off deep. But James Shannon with the chance to return doesn't fumble this one. Gets some blocking. He had a little bit of room. Now he's going to cut it to the near side. Cuts up the middle. Mr. LeJames Shannon doing a great job staying on his feet, fighting off those tackles, and gets the ball out to the 29-yard line. Great job there by LeJames Shannon showing uh, Barry Sanders-esque uh, feet right there, keeping his feet moving and doing a great job moving laterally. But also, as I said before, that Bowling Green defense having all kinds of trouble wrapping him up there. Yeah, are seeing a lot of arm tackles early. And you know Coach Wallace has to be concerned about that. In order to get the strong tackle, you got to hit him up high. Hit him right below the shoulder pads and get your arms around him, no matter if it's an arm or a waist or whatever, and just take his legs out from underneath him. You're exactly right, Dan. You're seeing a lot of arm tackling early, and you just can't do that, especially against this quick team. Forrester. Fakes the handoff, going to keep it himself again this time. Another arm tackle. He breaks it, gets out of bounds at around the 33-yard line. A pickup of four or five on that play. But as I just mentioned, another arm tackle there allowed him to get outside and gain yardage. They had him stopped at the line of scrimmage. Forster showing great speed out there, and it looked like he dinged up his arm a little bit. He'll be all right, though. But Forster doing a great job, and it seems that every time he's been able to move around those ends, it's been because of a great fake. Bowling Green really respecting the other side on that game, and uh, you just—it's hard to stop those uh, those bootlegs to the outside and the uh, on the and the rollouts because Forster has such a great arm, and he's also got another great cast of players by, around him. Second and seven for the Dragons. The handoff this time up the middle. Shane Green, nothing there. Wait a minute. The ball comes loose. The officials are going to mark it down. It appears Warren Central already recovered, anyways. So the fumble that wasn't, Shane Green up the middle. Not much happening that time. Good job by the defense to stop the progress. Great job. And that'll bring up third and long as Bowling Green will have to get a good stop here to keep that momentum going. Well, you know they're going to turn to their big candidate there in the middle. Brad Booker played outstanding last week against Greenwood. Had five tackles, six to six, six assists. One tackle for a loss, and he forced a fumble. So let's see what he can do here. The Dragons pitching it outside. Great blocks. Shane Green turning the corner, heading for the sticks. That's going to be close. I, it, they might have to measure for that one. He stretched for the first down, but I'm not sure if he got it. 
Well, the official was right on top of it to spot the ball. And taking a look at it, this one's pretty close. Looks like it's going to be short. Apparently no measurement. So it'll be fourth and inches. Interesting situation here. If you're the Dragons, what do you do? I'm not sure. I think uh, I think with the highly potent running game, uh, I think you got to put it on the ground, possibly give it up to Forrester. Hopefully they're not listening to me here, and they'll give it to Forrester up the middle. But well, well, we'll, we'll see, see what they're going to do. They are going to go for it here. Fourth and inches. Big play early in this game. Forrester leaning through the middle on the quarterback keeper. No doubt about that one. He picks up a good three yards for the first down. Great job there by Forrester to just get through that line. And you got to credit the center on that one. He did a great job of down blocking and also the guard on that play. Uh, it appeared that that was uh, Rigby and Kitchens on the Warren Central offense who helped Forrester get through there. Yeah, the Dragons opened up there. Their, uh, their first offensive series with the quarterback sneak. We've seen him go with the sneak and the draw several times, forcing the ball up the middle. Todd Kitchens and his crew doing a nice job opening up holes. If you're the Warren Central offense, you've got to be feeling confident right now as Bowling Green wasn't even close to stopping him there. Forrester makes the handoff, going to keep it himself again. Forrester up the middle, five or six yards that time. Forrester picking up as many yards as anyone else on this field. There's a really strong tackle right there by J.P. Carl. And you're exactly right. Forrester doing a great job uh, as, as Bowling Green has to respect everybody in the field, as I mentioned earlier. Forrester really taking advantage of that and having his way with the Bowling Green defense. So with seven minutes, 30 seconds to go in the second quarter of play, it'll be second and about four for the Dragons, who are marching down the field already with a two-point lead. Gabe Forrester. Snaps the ball now and gives it to Harris. Harris, all kinds of room outside, turning the corner. Nice tackle that time. Bowling Green on the corner out there to bring him down and keep him from running for more. J.P. Carl doing it uh, in numbers right there as he puts together back-to-back -to -back tackles. Uh, Carl showing uh, great leadership as a senior, and, uh, and the Bowling Green defense really has to be watching Carl here because he's doing a great job wrapping up his defenders and bringing them down, not letting them score. That's plenty for a first down. It'll be first and 10 at the 41-yard line for the Warren Central Dragons. DeWalt and Wilson coming short here to our side of the field. The handoff up the middle. Shane Green goes to about the 36 to 37, picking up a good three yards. And Lee, one of the things that we're continuing to see, Warren Central able to move the ball on the ground. They don't have to go to the air and risk an interception, and they're able to pound it out and just let the clock keep running. You're exactly right, and I'm wondering how long it's going to take for the Bowling Green defense to catch on. It seems Warren Central is running all over them, and, uh, and uh, Forrester really hasn't had to show off his arm too much because Warren Central is having their way on, on the ground. Forrester. Going to keep it again. Forrester again breaking the tackle, working his way upfield for five or six. This is going to be very close to the first down. We'll see where they spot it and if they're going to measure. Nope, no measurement needed. First down, the official says. Keep those chains rolling. That, that, that's exactly what I said. Warren Central having no problem getting first downs here. And Bowling Green's really going to have to start tackling before uh, uh, Forrester is going to be forced to put it in the air. So We talked about Booker in this game being such a key for Bowling Green in the middle. So far, he hasn't been a factor. You know Bowling Green wants to get him involved. Well, definitely. You have this strong senior uh, front for uh, Warren Central, and they're just doing a great job on Pitch Booker. Pitch outside to Harris. Oh, that's got to be a face mask. Yeah, blatant face mask. Bowling Green in the backfield that time to make the tackle, but... It looked I mean, like that was number 32, Martel Dunn, who's pretty much swung him around by his face mask. You know that doesn't feel good. Well, actually, uh, you've got your wrong roster there, buddy. Do I? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Tyson DeWalt. Sorry. With the pretty flagrant face mask. You hate to see that. Those are the kind of plays where, where people get hurt. Sorry to uh, Martel Dunn if you're watching this. I didn't mean that. And I don't know if you noticed or not here, Lee, coming off the field right away, Coach Wallace pulling DeWalt off and goes to talk to his cornerback out there, telling him, we don't want any of that. Definitely. And if you're, if you're Tyson DeWalt, you got to look past that, you know. 
at least he didn't let him get to the open field. I mean, I hate to say that, but uh, you got to look past this. Uh, DeWald is only a junior. He'll be back next year to play senior year. Um, and and you got to look past that. you got to stop him here, and you got to get the defense hyped. First and 10 for the Dragons. Five minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half of play. Toss again. Desmond Harris to the outside, staying on his feet, fighting off the shoestring tackle. Is near another first down. Boy, the Dragons just owning the line of scrimmage. Oh, you're exactly right. And that's why Harrison, or that's why, yeah, exactly. That's why Harrison Green have had uh, uh, no trouble running over the Bowling Green secondary because, you know, there's no offensive line there. They have one or two people at a time to defend. You've seen a couple times Bowling Green get a chance to wrap them up, but there hasn't been that many guys there in the secondary to tackle the, uh, the very fast uh, tailbacks of Warren Central. Well, the ball spotted just shy of the six-yard line, setting up a second down in inches for Warren Central, and they're going to have to burn another timeout. Lots of confusion, lots of guys going in and out of that huddle. They just couldn't get it all together. So Warren Central burns their second timeout of the game already. I got to tell you, Dan, if you're, if you're bowling green here, you're going to have to look to a stop. You're going to have to have the, de the secondary pick up the defense and just start hitting guys. You're going to have to have them laying out, and you're going to have to put solid hits on these guys for them to try and test the air. Warren Central hasn't done any of that tonight. They've just been well, running it up the middle, running up the middle, running around the end, and doing whatever they want to do. And they haven't had to go to the air. Exactly. I think that's the point that we're trying to get across here. Exactly. Bowling Green's going to have to force them to put it up in the air and hopefully uh, stop stops any kind of offensive gains that uh, Warren Central's making. The Dragons trying to keep it together. They don't want any penalties. They're back in, inside the red zone, about to put it in again, looking to build on a 16-14 lead with five minutes and 23 seconds to go in the first half of play. Lots of great games coming your way this year on Insight Cable. Of course, we're going to see Bowling Green again when they play right here against Allen County Scottsville. That game you'll be able to catch on uh, Insight Cable, Monday, October 15th at 8.30. That should be a decent showdown. Allen, Con Allen County playing some good ball. Definitely. And we'll see how far along Bowling Green is there. They came out strong, but today looking very weak, especially on defense. So here we go. The Dragons giving the ball up the middle. Desmond Harris looking to get the first down, and he's got a couple yards. So we will move it in. First thing goal now for the Dragons. Good job. Warren Central probably not trying to run it in. You know, if you do score, that's great. But they were just looking for the first down. That way they got four downs to score from uh, about the three or four yard line. So we'll see right here if, if Bowling Green can stop. If they can, that's a great momentum switch there for Bowling Green. But Warren Central looking too potent right now on the ground. Three men in the backfield for the Dragons. The handoff goes to Harris. Harris leaning up the middle, trying to stretch out and get in the end zone. Looks like he's just a little bit short, and he is, so it'll be second and goal now at the one-yard line. And Looks Bowling, like... Yeah, Bowling Green player Brad Booker a little bit slow to get up. He's but he did a great job tackling there, wrapped him up solid, and uh, he really had nowhere to go. So what's the call here, Coach? Do you go with the quarterback sneak again? I'm going to shut up on this one because I keep calling the wrong plays. If it was me, of course I'd go for the quarterback sneak. Force are so strong up the middle, but uh, you never know. It'll probably be well, Here we go. Here. There it is, the quarterback sneak, the call. Forrester leaning out, no signal yet. We've got a flag. No signal yet on where the ball's going to spot or if he got in. We saw a flag thrown. Apparently he didn't get in. And we will have to wait and see what the penalty is all about. Definitely didn't get in. Looks like there's a player down. Yeah, bigger concern. That's Gabe Forrester. They're holding his ankle up. Uh, and, and the way that they're kind of, the way that they're holding it there a little bit, uh, Lee, I don't know if this is a, looks like it just might be a cramp. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. You need to get a whole lot of water because it's really hot, as we can tell up here in the booth, you know. But it's really hot out there on the field, especially with, you know, 50, 75 pounds worth of pads on. But uh, Forrester, yeah, it looks like it's just a cramp. They're holding his leg in the elevated position, uh, probably a cramp in that uh, right leg. And the officials have now waved off the flag, so apparently no infraction. 
So they tend to Gabe Forrester. He's been outstanding in this first half. And really, if you're Warren Central, you can't afford to lose him. Definitely not. Forrester's been the heart and soul of this offense so far, uh, doing a great job with the rollouts and the QB sneaks. And it uh, looks like right here we're going to see the water coming out for the, for the players to uh, prevent them from getting any cramps. <laughs> Well, coming up at halftime, make sure and keep it tuned here. We've got an outstanding halftime show brought to you by Royal Music, the purple marching band for Bowling Green. You know they do a great job, Kyle Ali, and they're going to be performing for us two songs, classical glass, classical gas, that is, and sounds of silence. As Gabe Forrester getting up off the field, he's going to be all right. You've got to figure he'll be back. You can see him right there going to give the high five to his backup. Good to see him coming off under his own power. And really, if you notice there, the teamwork as, as Brock Whitney comes in, Gabe Forrester, the first one to come over and say, hey, punch this one in, buddy. You got to look You got to look for the experience here because that's exactly what Brock Forrester doesn't have, or Brock Whitney doesn't have. He's a sophomore. Third and inches, a flag, somebody moving up front for Warren Central. So the Dragons shooting themselves in the foot. We're going to back it up five yards. Third and goal at the five-yard line. And it looks like the good the good news for Warren Central, Gabe Forrester trying to fight his way back on the field over there, waiting for his coach to let go and let him in. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So Forrester coming back in. Forrester, Forrester really is a gamer. And when you're on that sidelines and you've been so potent like you have been as, For as Forrester has been, you know, you got to be asking, come on, coach, let me get in, let me put it in. Big play, here we go. Third down, the toss outside, Bowling Green all over it. Not a chance that time for Desmond Harris. Boy, as soon as he got the ball, the Purples were right on top of it. Great job there by the junior linebacker, Andy Schultz, the 6'1", 175-pounder. He came right through, clipped him right at the legs, wrapped him up right around his legs, had nowhere to go. Fourth down and goal to goal at the seven-yard line. Gabe Forrester staying on the field. Apparently, the Dragons are going to try to go for this. They want the touchdown. Not happy with just three. 16 to 14 to score. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Huge play coming now for the Purples. They have to make this stop. Forrester under center. Fakes the handoff. Going to keep it himself. Looking to throw. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the Purples, P.J. Carl, right on top of it, pushes him out of bounds. Bowling Green comes up with the stop that they needed. J.P. Carl right there showing why he's, he's so strong, a defensive leader on this team as a senior. And i got to ask you, Dan, I'm not exactly sure why they tried to go for it there. Bowling Green showing great stops there on that series. And I'm not sure what was going through his head. I think you got to kick it through, get three points, and get that margin as extended as much as you can because the Bowling Green offense hasn't shown me anything tonight except for that offensive run there by Johnson. Of course, tradition would say put the points on the board, but Warren Central has been moving the ball so well, you can understand the coach's thoughts there in trying to get seven on the board. Instead, Bowling Green will take over. Kyle Sledge under center, pitches it to the outside. Aaron Johnson... Looking to turn the corner, not a whole lot. He may have fumbled the ball. Warren Central says they have it, but the officials are going to mark it down, and it'll be second down for Bowling Green. Boy, an anxious moment, almost the second turnover of the game for the Purples. That's exactly right. I wasn't sure if he fumbled either, but the officials did blow their whistle before the ball came loose. Well, Lee, outside of that, series toward the end of the first quarter where we had all those flags it really has been an exciting football game to watch oh you're exactly right and this is this is living up to uh all the billing it's received two top 10 powerhouses going Sleds at it. going under center gives off to Terrell Green who gets stopped Terrell Green met at the line of scrimmage that time by the Dragons no I think uh Sledge kept it on that one got hit in the backfield I think they got hit for a loss well, maybe you got better eyesight than I do. I guess I need to pull out the binoculars up here. It must have been a really good fake there by Sledge as he got a couple of us up here, too. You know, that's one thing. Cal Sledge, really, it's, it's key in an option formation, and this is an option team, to be able to make those fakes and get yourself some openings to run the ball. You're exactly right, but it looks like Bowling Green has only been able to break a couple of plays. They're going to have to put it in the air a little bit to open up this Warren Central defense. I formation for the purple. Sledge stepping under center. A whistle on the far side of the field and another flag. 
I think that's going to be a false start. Yeah, we've either got someone who moved or possibly a delay of game. Uh, looks like it's going to be movement. The official's talking about it. We wait for the signal. Minute 50 to go here in the first half of play. It's 16 to 14. The Dragons out in front of Bowling Green. Of course, Warren Central looking to end that eight-game losing streak. Let's get the call now from the official. Delay of game penalty. That's exactly what it was. So the Purples back it up five yards, and they will set up on the five-yard line. Third down and 15 to go. And, boy, they are ready to go right at the line of scrimmage. And Coach Wallace... Saw something that he didn't like, wants to talk it over, and Bowling Green burns their first time out. I got to tell you, Warren Central, after this, uh, after this unfortunate uh, miscue at, on turning over the ball on downs there, the defense has come right up, and if you saw in that first uh, possession, you had uh, number 11 there, uh, Casey Dye, jumping up and down, ready to go, and that's exactly what this Warren Central team's doing. They're ready to fight, and... Uh, Good job by uh, switching up the defense a little bit, trying to get uh, Sledge to uh, get a delay of game penalty. Great crowd over here at L. Donaldson Stadium tonight. Everybody excited, having a good time. We had some rain earlier today, and, and really a threat tonight uh, as we were getting ready for kickoff. There was some thunder and lightning in the area. Apparently it's passed by and missed us. A gorgeous evening to come on out and watch some football, and we got a packed house. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, earlier, I wasn't sure if we were going to pack it in, but uh, everybody came at game time, and uh, great support for these two teams out here. And I wish this wind would kick up through this window a little bit more. Uh, help me out there. there. There was a strong wind blowing on the field as we got ready to kick off, blowing from the near side of the field across to the far side for you watching at home. There's still a stiff breeze, but it's shifted a little bit now at the back of the Dragons. Third down, Bowling Green running up the middle, apparently just looking to get enough room to punt the ball. Yeah, that's what it looked like there. Uh, great, great stop on the defense there by uh, Warren Central. Uh, looked like that was number 58, uh, Bryson Hall on the tackle. Uh, great job there, and Warren Central doing a good job forcing the fourth down. The Dragons call their third time out, of course, to stop the clock. With a minute 42 left, they're going to get it back, looking to put some more points on the board. And, Dan, I'm not exactly sure, but I, third and long there, I think you got to put the ball in the air. It looks like Wallace doesn't have any faith in Sledge's arm to uh, to try and get that first down there. I think, uh, you know, you obviously have to be uh, protective of, uh, of the sack and also of uh, fumbling the ball on the run. But I think, you know, the worst you can do is, is throw the ball away and just kick from where you're at. On that run up the middle, he barely even gained a yard. I'm not sure what Wallace was thinking there. But, Lee, really, Bowling Green hasn't played that great a game. I mean, let's True. look at it objectively. True. And here we are with a minute and a half left. He probably just wants to get into halftime with no more damage done. I, you, if you I throw the ball there, that. you run the risk of throwing an interception deep. So just playing it safe, apparently, is what Kevin Wallace is going to do. And the Purples will punt. Whoa, the snap, a bad snap. It goes out of, it kicks it out of the end zone. Let's see where this ball is down at the six yard line. A two yard punt. That is exactly what Coach Wallace was trying to avoid. And they had the heat coming. Looks like that was number 11, Casey Dye, ready to take the punter's head off on that play. And that was a great move. Well, it wasn't a good snap at all. A nice job by Adam Mercer just to catch the ball and get the punt away. Lots of pressure from the Dragons. Boy, they almost got a touchdown right there with their defense. Great job there on their pressure, as you were saying, Dan. And that's exactly what the Warren Central defense had been doing all that series. And now you're going to see them capitalize. Shane Green lining up in the backfield. Forrester steps under center, fakes the hand off to Green, going to keep it himself, rolling outside. Booker tried to strip it away, wasn't able to do so, and Forrester will pick up about three or four yards and we've got a Bowling Green purple down on the field. We'll try to find out who that is. Booker there definitely going for the strip, not going for the tackle as evidence. He just lost him and he spun right out of Booker's hands and fell down. Well, we don't want to speculate who that is, but from our vantage point up here, it looks like it just might be number 18, and that would be Jay Bradford. 
the senior. It is Jay it Bradford. It is Jay Bradford, yeah. And Bradford tried to, I noticed right there at the end of the play, he tried to get up on his own and just couldn't do it. Went back down. May have twisted an ankle as they tend to Bradford on the field. So now what, if you're Warren Central, it really looks like Bowling Green starting to clamp down a little bit on that run up the middle and, and put some pressure on it. Booker starting to step up. Well, Bradford, Lee, it looked like it could be a serious injury, but Bradford, boy, look at that toughness, huh? He jumped up. He's not going anywhere. He's ready to play ball. Definitely. And in a game like this, you know, you got to be thinking, you know, you got to get up strong. And it looks like maybe it's just a little a little twist or something, maybe, maybe just a small cramp or something. But Bradford's up moving. It looked like he might have been on his on his right arm there. I, I think there's a small abrasion. Well, the Dragons coming to the line. Second and five to go with a minute left in the first half. Forrester rolling out, looking to pass. Has a man, throws it. It's, it's complete, short of the end zone. So DeWalt, Lonel DeWalt, makes the catch, but comes up about a yard short of the end zone. That'll make it third and goal. 45 seconds to go. The Dragons trying to punch it in and extend their lead. You see Bradford getting the ting to on the sideline. Might have got that thumb pinched. Here we go. Third and goal. The handoff up the middle. Desmond Harris trying to get in. And don't think he got there. Looks like he's about a half yard short. Dan, I got to tell you on that on that last pass play from... Uh from uh, Lee. Forrester. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt. Interesting situation. Clock running out. We're down to 14 seconds. Not enough time. No timeouts to get the kicker on the field. So fourth down. Here we go. There's the handoff. Harris gets in. Harris gets in. The Dragons convert with eight seconds left in the first half of play. Warren Central putting another touchdown on the board. And that right there shows the, he the toughness of Mr. Harris. He came right in trucked right into him, put his helmet right in his shoulder pads and just drove him backwards for the score. Great job, mental toughness right there from Desmond Harris Boy, to get in. Great awareness from the Warren Central Dragon sideline with no timeouts left, not trying to get the kicker on the field there, just going for it. And they do get in the end zone. So Poppy will look to tack on the extra point. The snap is up, the kick is up, and the kick is through. That makes the score now 23 to 14. Warren Central looking sharp. They really are, and Harris showing a lot of toughness right there, uh, capitalizing on the small mistake Forster made on that pass play. Lionel DeWalt just came right in front of the goal line. I'm not sure if he was actually looking down more than he was looking right at the quarterback, but wasn't all the way back. Great job, though, by Harris to make up for it and punch it literally right into the end zone. So with only eight seconds remaining here in the first half of play, you have to expect after the kickoff, Bowling Green, they wanted to get the punt and avoid giving up anything else. They did give up the touchdown. So you have to expect now that they're just going to take this kick and take a knee and get into halftime and try to get regrouped. Yeah, I think if you're Kevin Walsh, you definitely have to go into halftime, get the troops fired up, and come out just the way Warren Central's come out. I think Bowling Green might be a little stunned right now to see such power coming from this Warren Central offense. But uh, we'll see here in the, as we uh, wind down the, set, the first half. And uh, hopefully Bowling Green can, can get out and get a little more offense up there. Well, credit that Warren Central Dragon line. They have done an outstanding job against the defense of Bowling Green, opening up those holes that have let Gabe Forrester and Desmond Harris just really have their way in the first half. Poppy's set to kick. Kicks it low, little squib kick. Bowling Green trying to play it. It's not going to go out of bounds. It gets touched and then knocked out of bounds. So Bowling Green will have the ball at about the 17-yard line. No time runs off the clock, so still eight seconds to go. Do you expect Bowling Green to take a knee here or maybe air one out for the end zone? I'm not sure. I think uh, they'll probably either take a knee or just try and run it up the middle, hold on to the ball as to not fumble. But uh, I think if you're Kevin Wallace, you got to save face right here, get in the locker room, and get the troops going. Bowling Green taking their time getting out on the field. Don't go anywhere, folks, at halftime. Great halftime entertainment. The Bowling Green Purple Marching Band brought to you by Royal Music right here on Insight Cable. The Purple stepping to the line. Kyle Sledge will go under center. We'll see what they're going to do here. Sledge stepping back, looking to throw. Apparently, he's going to air it out here. He's got his man, Aaron Johnson. Johnson trying to break a tackle. Not going to happen. 
and that will end the first half of play. You're scored 23 to 14. The Warren Central Dragons fired up, buddy, as they head off the field with the big lead, the nine point lead over the Purples of Bowling Green. Please don't go anywhere. Halftime entertainment in just a moment. You're watching high school football on Inside Communications. Second half just about to get underway. Welcome back to EL Donaldson Stadium. A great matchup we've got for you right here. Warren Central Dragons leading Bowling Green 23 to 14. Of course, a big key in that first half, Lee. Harris punching in the touchdown with eight seconds left, and the Dragons are now gonna get the ball back. Great job, Dan. I'd like to see how what kind of effect that has on Bowling Green coming out here. Shane Green, wait a minute. Shane Green taking the opening kickoff. He's got some room. He's got to beat Booker. Can't get around Brad Booker. Great return to get the second half started. Boy, the Dragons coming right back with that fire they showed early, and they're going to set up first and 10 right near midfield. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say, Dan. I want to see how this touchdown by Harris with eight seconds to go in that half, a, a real strong punch in through, uh, through the Bowling Green defense, and uh, it looks like they got off to a good start. Uh, Desmond Harris taking that or is that Shane Green? I'm not sure. That was Shane Green. Was Shane Green? Shane Green with a nice return there, and uh, and Bowling, or Warren Central picking up right where they left off. But Brad Booker, not to be denied, gets his tackle there. He's not going to let anybody around him, I don't think. Booker really a non-factor in that first half for Bowling Green. You know, Coach Wallace had to get into him a little bit and tell his big senior star, step it up and start playing like you're capable of it. He had a great game last week at Greenwood. Really, this entire defense did in the first half of that game. They only gave up one first down and two total yards of offense. Complete opposite story tonight. The Dragons have really just had their way. Now, off the pitch, fakes the pitch. Gabe Forrester picks up about eight yards. We're seeing more of that. That's all they did in the first half, Lee. Yeah, you're exactly right. And Bowling Green still hasn't picked up on it. I think if you're Kevin Walsh, you got to bring the defense up a little. Forster has not thrown, or I mean, he has, but not effectively right, right. Uh, at all in the first half. If you're Bowling Green, I think you got to bring it up. Maybe start with a 5-4 defense. Uh, try and bring four linebackers in to go with a five-man front, and uh, put two defenders back there because you know if they hit them up front in the front line where they have been tackling, group tackling the ball carrier, that's where they've done well. Well, Forster giving the ball up to Shane Green. Shane Green up the middle again. Another gain of six or seven for Warren Central. If you can get six or seven yards up the middle on every play, you've got to be happy with that. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, Brad Booker and uh, looks like uh, number 56. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Quinn Williams right there on the stop. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you bring that defense up, you're going to have to force Forster to go through the air, and you really need to stop that run. Right here we see off the bat another first down for uh, Warren Central showing that they're still effective here. The Dragons driving early in the second half. Forrester again faking the handoff. Keeps it on his own. Goes outside. Gets a couple. Once again, Quinn Williams having trouble uh, ra wrapping up Forrester there. And uh, if you hit him in that backfield, make him hit for a loss, you're going to force a long third down, a long second down, and make him go to the air. Challenge that secondary of yours. And uh, that's got to be what Kevin Walsh is thinking, but unable to wrap him up right there as he picks up about two yards or two to three yards on that carry. Yeah, it'll be second down and eight to go for the Dragons. And, Lee, an interesting note, maybe something to keep in mind. We haven't seen Desmond Harris yet in this opening drive. It's been all Shane Green for Warren Central. So we need to, we'll, we'll keep taps on it and see if maybe there was an injury there. We'll see what we can find out. For now, Harris uh, not in the lineup. As you see, the Dragons... On the little screen pass, wide receiver screen. Boy, the big fella, Linnell DeWalt, just going at it, fighting for those yards. Looks like, looks like he, sorry, Lee, don't mean to cut you off, but it looks like he may have been stopped for an actually a, a, a one or two yard loss there. Yeah, that was a great job there by Bowling Green to get to the strong side and hit him strong. Uh, looks like number 28, uh, Andy Schultz right there with a cast on his left arm. Uh, I didn't see that in the first half. They might have wrapped him, and maybe that's what took so long. Well, I'm now, not sure. and, and this is uh, worth mentioning here that also. This is his first game that he's played this season. He's missed the first couple games of the season with a broken thumb. So we'll see how that affects him. Forrester now looking to pass. Lots of pressure from Bowling Green. He's got to get rid of the ball. 
dumps it off to DeWine. Wow. Big hit, and a flag dropped way back here. Forrester got hit late. It's got to be a late hit. Terrell Green had all kinds of pressure on the quarterback, Gabe Forrester, and forced him out on the punt. Not to take anything away from the huge hit right there on Linnell DeWalt. Yes, it's going to be a roughing the passer penalty against Bowling Green. But, Dan, that's exactly what it is. Terrell Green, I'm not sure, thought he uh, hit him, but that was really obvious. That was a late hit. But you're right. I mean, Booker laid him out. Great hit by Booker, and uh, hopefully that shakes him up enough to uh, let him know not to try that on him again. But uh, that moves the chains, and, and that's what happened in the first half. Bowling Green kept kicking themselves uh, in the behind by making uh, uh, foolish penalties. Green obviously doesn't think he hit him, and, well, that's the official's call for them to make, not us. We really have had some excellent officiating tonight. Tip your hats to those guys. They've done a magnificent job keeping control of this game. Instead of, of forcing Warren Central into a fourth down play here, it's going to be first and ten after the penalty. Forrester pitching now to Desmond Harris. Harris making his first appearance of the second half, spinning out there on the sideline, picks up a good seven or eight yards to set up second down. Great job by Harris. Uh, probably not injured there as uh, he, he shows great movement there and uh, gets out of bounds. Great spin move, and it looks like that will bring up about second and two or so. It will be second and two, Harris. One play and go get a drink of water. Boy, what a nice luxury for Coach Ricky Wood over there to be able to run his two guys, Shane Green and Desmond Harris, in and out of there to keep them both fresh. And what's really great about these two guys is they'll both be back next year to help out. <laughs> Outstanding games, really, from everyone in the backfield tonight from Warren Central. Gabe Forrester has played really well, and now you just see the strategy, giving the ball to Shane Green, letting him pound it out. Maybe they start thinking work the clock, but they've really had their way running the ball, and they haven't been forced into throwing any passes. Yeah, you're exactly right. Number 18 there, uh, Jay Bradford, who apparently isn't hurt too bad as he wraps him up there. But Bradford, Booker, you're going to see this uh, probably a whole lot more. Wallace had to be emphasizing the fact that if they can get two or three guys around the ball carrier, one guy hold on, the other two hit him hard and put him on the ground, force that third down or fourth down, that's exactly what Wallace wants right there. Well, it will be third down. But uh, Warren Central apparently going to talk it over. They burn their first timeout of the second half. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter play. 23-14 to 14 your score. The first of many exciting and outstanding football games, we hope, right here on Insight Communications. Coming up uh, next week, you can see Warren East at Greenwood. The week after that, you'll see Warren East again taking on these Warren Central Dragons. Boy, if they can continue to play like this, look for a big season from them, Lee. Uh, following that, Warren Central and Greenwood, Allen County, Scottsville right here at Bowling Green, Allen County, Scottsville at Warren Central, and then again later to cap off the season, Bowling Green travels to Warren East. That the lineup of outstanding football. You can see some great area teams playing right here exclusively on Inside Cable. I'm really looking forward to that. A lot of games uh, that have big-time implications, especially that last one, Bowling Green and Warren East. Well, Bowling Green coach Kevin Wallace not too happy with the play of his team here early in the second half Warren Central with a key touchdown eight seconds left in the first half of play then they get the ball back to start the second half and really driving trying to capitalize this game and and, and really looking to put the nail in the coffin early yeah you're exactly right if Warren needs gets or if Warren Central gets a, a score here that really puts Bowling Green at a disadvantage Harris up the middle he's got the first down Another three or four yard running play. And Warren Central, I think so far, Lee, it's just been give the ball to the running back and let them do their thing. You're exactly right. But what, what I've noticed here is each time that Warren Central's running up the middle, you've got guys like Victor Coleman, the defensive tackle, Quinn Williams, Brad Booker, and uh, a lot of the, uh, of the strong defensive players who we mentioned early on have been doing a whole lot better job wrapping them up. And as you see there, you know, just a few yards, although it was a first down, just a few yards doing a good job wrapping it up there. Bowling Green standing in the five-man front. Uh, Forrester, oh, wow, what a hole. Forrester, we've seen him do it all night. He fakes the handoff and turns and just had all kinds of daylight. Goes 15 yards on first down for the touchdown. 
and the Dragons really starting to open this thing up. Dan, I got to tell you, I'm really chewing on my tongue now. Uh, just as I say that, Forrester fakes the entire defense out and uh, marches in for the easy score. Great job up there by the line again, and Warren Central picking up right where they left, left off. I'm not sure if Bowling Green's going to be resilient enough to stop this attack. Daniel Poppy on to attempt the extra point. Kick is on its way. It's good. The score now reads Warren Central Dragons 30, Bowling Green 14, a 16-point advantage for the Dragons with eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter of play. I got to tell you, Dan, uh, Warren Central looking really strong here in the first half. Uh, yet to see their defense. I want to see what they can do here. If the defense holds, they've got this game locked because Bowling Green's offense isn't moving at all. Their defense is having trouble wrapping it up. And uh, as we can see right there, Warren Central's got all the confidence in the world to keep the ball on the ground and, and not have to put it in the air. We can't stress it enough. A huge battle within Warren County here. Warren Central and Bowling Green. Bowling Green has taken eight in a row from the Dragons. And really, just sitting up here watching the game with you, Lee, you have to see the heart and determination of the Dragons. They just want it more. Oh, yeah, I, th I think you're exactly right. Uh, Warren Central uh, probably coming in the underdogs here to a very talented Bowling Green team that wiped out Greenwood last time. And, uh, I mean, Warren Central has shown me a whole lot of heart. Poppy with the short kick. Fielded by the up back there for the Purples. Trying to swing it outside, gets tripped up. Denton Robertson with the return. He gets about 10 yards on the return. Great Tri tackle there by the freshman, Charles Carver. Yeah, Charles Carver all over that. So Bowling Green will go to work now. We'll see what they can do offensively. I got to tell you, Dan, that, that tackle right there by the freshman, uh, Carver, was, was really solid because... Warren Central had two or three guys coming this way to help block for him. Carver was the last man there. Great job by the freshman. Sledge under center, pulling it out, going to keep it himself on the option. Sledge gets about five yards and dropped over there by Desmond Harris. Harris doing it all for his team. Yeah, Casey Dye right there making a great play too, and we've called his name a lot. Dye doing a great job on the outside. Uh, he's there. Really strong uh, defensive end on the uh, left side. Uh, Die getting it done. Doing, like we said earlier, came pumped to the line right there when that stop happened uh, on Bowling Green, uh, the last uh, possession they had. And Die's doing a great job tonight. Sledge pitching outside. Anthony Rhodes. Rhodes picks up the first down. The offensive line for Bowling Green that time now making things happen, opening up some of those gaps, giving Anthony Rhodes a chance to run the ball. Great job there by Rhodes to punch it to the outside, and Bowling Green gets first down. Let's see if they can keep it moving and keep the uh, offense on the field. You have to figure this is a key drive for the Purples. If they're going to keep their hopes of winning this game alive, you've got to imagine they've got to get points here. Sledge puts a man in motion. Now on the option, going to keep it, well, actually hands it off. Up the middle, Terrell Green gets about three or four yards. Cal Sledge again faking me out up here. <laughs> the man's good with the ball. He's, he's good on the basketball court, too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we broadcast a lot of his games uh, last season for uh, Bowling Green here on Inside, and uh, looking forward to more of the same. But, uh, yeah, Sledge is a great all-around athlete as he shows with his arms and his legs right there. Purple stepping back up to the line now. Second down and six. Gives it up the middle to Johnson. Johnson, not much that time. He may have got a yard to bring up third down. Yeah, great job there by Warren Central up front to do the tackling. Uh, tough break there for Johnson. Uh, he was fighting for every yard he could get there. So it'll be third down, five to go for Bowling Green. 30 to 14 our score. The Dragons of Warren Central out in front. Six minutes, 30 seconds to go. I'm Dan Gaddy with Lee Handel at E.L. Donaldson Stadium. Thank you for joining us. An exciting game so far. Sledge putting a man in motion. They go with the option again up the middle. This is going to be close to the first down. I think he's just a yard or two short. Terrell Green on the carry. And we'll wait and see what Bowling Green does here. Yeah, They're he's gonna... definitely short. He's about a yard short. And uh, I think if you're Bowling Green, you need to go for it here. And, you gotta... and that is exactly what Coach Wallace is going to do. Fourth and one, big play coming up now. If the Dragons can make this stop, they get the ball back and could put it away. Bowling Green under center now. 
Run there, typical option. Sledge pitching at the absolute last minute. And what a great play. Anthony Rhodes takes the pitch and gets the first down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he got the first down, although it's very close. It'll depend on the spot. And the head official does call first down. Great pitch there by Sledge uh, to pitch to Johnson. Uh, quality, quality job by Johnson to know where the first down was and get there. We are fortunate enough to be here in Bowling Green with Western Kentucky, obviously one of the masters of the option, a Western-esque type pitch right there. Hold it as long as you can and then get it out there. Coach Harbaugh would be happy to see that. Yeah, he sure would. Now on the fake, Sledge rolling out, pump fakes. Now he's going to tuck it away and take off running. Everybody for Warren Central trying to catch him up. Sledge swiveling those hits, gets the first down, about 15 yards and then out of bounds. Boy, he had everybody just reaching and grabbing, trying to catch up to him. Yeah, he sure did, and especially Casey Dye. Dye came right after him and ripped the towel right off his right off his back and carried it with him as, as he was in pursuit. But great job by Sledge to get loose and uh, probably fake out a couple of defenders. Uh, of course, quality Lee, run there by Sledge to pick up the first down. Of course, Leon, Friday nights just pulling the flag won't get the job done. you got to bring the whole guy down. That's right. We're not in intramurals right now, so... <laughs> Got to so, get him all the way down. First and 10 for the Purples, driving the ball at the 31-yard line. Sledge pitching. Fumble, fumble, that ball is loose. We'll see who came up with it. Looks like Anthony Rhodes able to recover. There, there's a flag down on the field. We will wait and see how this goes. Boy, I think Rhodes had given up on the pitch. Sledge holding it again to the last possible moment and then pitching it out there. That was a good job by Sledge to get the pitch. I'm not sure why Rhodes wasn't able to hang on to that one. You definitely got to hang on to that one, especially when uh, you're in dire need of rushing yards and uh, spreading out that uh, Warren Central defense. Well, we'll see what the penalty is now. Holding against the Purples, so we'll back it up 10 yards. Tough break there for Bowling Green. Well, Lee, as exciting a game as this has been, nobody's leaving yet. We still have a packed house on an absolutely gorgeous night. Oh, football. yeah, Dan. There's still plenty of time to go, and Bowling Green really has to get the offense moving here. You got the fourth quarter coming up, and uh, they just have to get tough here. Sledge pitching. Halfback pass. There he is. Oh! Boy, Aaron Johnson had John Moore wide open. Moore was the only guy within 20 yards and just overthrew him. Kevin Wallace reaching into the bag of tricks right there and almost pulled one out. Great job there by John Moore to lose his defender. Uh, I believe that was Nick Wheat on uh, the defense, but uh, Moore showing outstanding speed. Johnson, a little too much arm, not enough uh, yeah. speed for Wheat there. Yeah, Moore just accelerated past everyone. Or Moore, rather. Left a, uh, a blazing trail of flames behind him. Second down, 20 yards to go. Purple's coming up to the line of scrimmage. They need to get something going. Just under five minutes left in the third quarter of play. The pitch this time, Johnson's going to keep it. Aaron Johnson trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Dragon snuffed that one out. Nothing there. Nowhere to go for Johnson as he cut back a couple times and just got stuffed. What do we say? Casey Dye right yeah, credit, there again to make the tackle. Casey Dye, the big senior, staying at home, keeping his eyes on the ball and making the play. Can't say enough about this guy. He's played great defense all night long, and he's a big reason why Warren Central's uh, keeping the offense uh, fresh and uh, ready to go every time they step on the field. Third and 21 to go for Bowling Green. They need to make this conversion. Sledge dropping back, straight pass, fires it across the middle. He's got Johnson. Johnson, that is going to be close to first down, and believe it or not, Lee, I think he's got it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. It. Warren Central playing really soft, giving Aaron Johnson lots of room to make that catch, and he does so, converting on third and 21. May hit first and 10 now for the Purples. Four minutes to go in the third quarter of play. Great job there by Sledge to find the open receiver right at the yard line. Turned around, just took it right across the plane and got the first down. Great job by Sledge. I'm not sure why he hadn't been doing that all night long. Sledge stepping back under center. Right back to the option. He's going to keep it. Boy, are you kidding me? Casey Dye all over the option, man. He's sniffing it out all over the place. He knows where the ball's at. Great eyes. And, and this guy's just so quick to get to the ball. You know, Bowling Green just can't get away from him. He's, he's playing out of this world tonight. 
but we don't give a in, an MVP award up here at Insight. But I'll tell you what, if we did, put an asterisk by Casey Dye's name. He has played outstanding tonight. Definitely. I think uh, the Warren Green defense at least has to give it to uh, Dye right there. Doing a great job tackling for Lawson. We'll see right here if he can hit him again. Sledge dropping back to pass on second and 14. Now he's scrambling. He tucks it away. Now wants to pass again. Here he goes. He's a master back there scrambling. Now he's got a man. Are you kidding me? There it is. Russell Parker making the catch. Russell Parker sets up a first and goal now for Kyle Sledge with his scrambling ability has everyone coming up and was able to just hang back there long enough to get a man free. I'm not sure, but I think that was Tyson Steelman, number nine on the reception. But a great job by Sledge to get it over the middle and hit him right in the numbers. Great, great play there by Sledge to get uh, away from Dye and the other defenders to get the ball off and over the middle of the field. Well, we have an official's timeout on the field. Don't know exactly what's going on. Apparently, they just want some water. Well, now, Warren, okay, there it is. On the far side of the field, Desmond Harris coming off. He's limping on the far side of the field there. May have twisted an ankle. And, Lee, I noticed uh, when we're going through the rosters, and we talked about this a little bit before the game, there are a lot of players on both of these teams that play both defense and offense. Do you think that fatigue will be a factor here toward the end? Oh, definitely. I got it, especially in Harris and Green's case. Harris has been running the ball a whole lot tonight, and uh, he might just have some cramps over there. They got his leg elevated, the left leg elevated, maybe just a cramp. Uh, we'll see. Anthony Rhodes picking up seven yards on the carry. It'll be second and goal for the Purples. Great job for Bowling Green coming right back, ready to score here. Bowling Green needs to get in the end zone and have a stop here on defense in order to stay in this ball game. The Purples will line up in a wishbone formation. Sledge hands it off, nowhere to go. And Terrell Green gets dropped right about at the half yard line. I got to tell you, Dan, we really haven't seen much of the wishbone offense tonight uh, as Western likes to run, yeah. as we alluded to before. But uh, I think uh, if you're Sledge, you got to open it up a little bit more, get around those ends as we see number nine, uh, Tyson Steelman, going out wide to the right. You, you might be thinking pass here. Third and goal. The Purple's coming to the line. They need a touchdown. Two minutes left in the third quarter play. Sledge, hands off. Johnson up the middle. Touchdown, untouched. Great job, Bowling Green's offensive line opening up a gap for Johnson to run through. Great job there by Johnson to get to the outside and score. Uh, Warren Central also thinking pass there. They had a couple guys back on that receiver, and that again shows you why I'm up in the box <laughs> and he's down on the field. But uh, great job there by Bowling Green to punch the ball through. Yes, it's a scary thought. Lee Handel on the sideline coaching the football team. <laughs> scary for me even. <laughs> 20 to 30 is our score. Warren Central takes a timeout before the extra point. Two minutes to go in the third quarter of play. I'm Dan Gaddy alongside Lee Handel. A great ball game this evening from E.L. Donaldson Stadium. Warren Central, of course, trying to end an eight-game losing streak to the Purples. And, Lee, we've talked about it, and, and I think it's worth continuing to talk about. The heart of the Dragons tonight has really just overshadowed the play of Bowling Green. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, Warren Central playing really strong in that first half. Played with a lot of heart. Came into this game as underdogs. You know, they were ranked number 10. Bowling Green, of course, ranked number 4 in uh, Class 3A. And uh, I think you're seeing Warren Central come out, you know, proving that they can hang with these guys. And uh, they shut down Booker for the most part. Booker's had a couple of uh, strong tackles, but, you know, nothing to, to mention. Uh, he had a really strong knock for a loss back there, but it was uh, it was taken away because of that flag for uh, uh, by Terrell Green on the late hit. But... Bowling know, Green, we'll see. Lee Bowling Green getting set for the conversion here. They're going to go for two and try to make this a one-score affair. Sledge stepping under center, dropped back to pass. Now he tucks it away, still going to look to pass. He's going to try to go himself, and he's in. Yes, Cal Sledge doing the work himself, getting the job done, goes in for the two-point conversion, and he may be hurt here, Lee. Cal but Sledge not getting up, laying on his stomach there on the field 
gave a 110% effort to get in the end zone. Boy, what a big conversion for Bowling Green. Yeah, you're exactly right. 110 plus percent as he hops up right there. Great effort there by Kyle Sledge, single-handedly putting the ball in, in the into the uh, scoring uh, column. But, I mean, that's exactly what Bowling Green's going to need. They're going to have to show hard, too. They're going to have to play really strong here, and there's a great play there by Kyle Sledge to get the two points on the board. So now Warren Central's going to get the ball back with two minutes left in the third quarter. Is it time to start really working the clock now? I think if you're uh, Warren Central, you still have to get the ball in the end zone. I'm not sure you worry about the clock right now as much as you worry about the end zone. I think uh, Bowling Green still within striking distance, as you said. Still a one-score affair, only down by eight now. Uh, they're going to have to get a great stop here, and you're going to need guys like Brad Booker to step up the defense. I mean, they're going to have to come through, hit them hard. Ches Brinkley, the sophomore, also going to have to plug that hole up the middle and get strong tackling. I can't stress that enough. So there goes the kick. Warren Central deep to receive it with James Shannon working across the 20, now looking for some room. Nothing there. Bowling Green shuts him down at the 27-yard line where the Dragons will take over first and 10. Bowling Green really needs to come out strong here, force a punt. That's, that's what they got to be thinking. Wallace has to be all over these guys. They need to force a punt, get the ball back, and get good position. They got to hold them right here. Now over at Greenwood, Bowling Green was able to really just own that offense and really shut them down. As we mentioned earlier, two yards of total offense and one first down in the first half. Tonight, Warren Central's really had them figured out and had them on their toes guessing. They've got to come up with the stop here. Forrester looking to roll out. Nothing there. They sniffed it out. Bowling Green all over that one. And Great. That, a nice stop right there to set up second down. Finally, Bowling Green figured out the fake, hit him right where they needed to. Great stop there by the Bowling Green defense. They have to hold tight. Second and about 11 here. They're going to have to look for the run and be strong here. They got to be strong up front and protect against the long runs. Shane Green checks back into the backfield for Warren Central. Gabe Forrester stepping underneath, now looking to pass. He's going deep. He's got a man and overthrows him. Leroy Wilson was out there, had a step on the defender. It's just Gabe Forrester overthrew him. And could that be because he hasn't had to pass all night? Yeah, that's that's very possible. Uh, great job there by number 80, uh, Leroy Wilson, to get behind the two defenders, uh, Butts and Aaron Johnson. But if you're uh, if you're uh, Geez, I don't know what I'm saying. Gabe, Foss, Gabe Forrester needs to get the ball down. A good job there by uh, Wilson to get open, but you just got to put it in his hands right there just enough so that you can keep the running game going. A little too much excitement to talk about here. A minute left in the third <laughs> quarter play. Green working off tackle, and Bowling Green just got the stop that they needed right there. That was third and ten. He only gets about three yards, so now Warren Central will have to punt. And Bowling Green's going to have a chance to get this thing tied up. Dan, I'm not sure, but I think this is the first time we've seen a punt all night. I think there was one there, before. Well, I think it's the first time that Warren Central's punted. Of course, we had the two-yard punt at the six-yard <laughs> line out of the end zone earlier from Bowling Green, a big key that set up that touchdown at the end of the first half. You see right there for Bowling Green, limping off the field, Victor Coleman. And hopefully he'll be all right. They're going to lay him down. Stretch out those legs. That just might be a cramp there. Hopefully he'll be able to come back. I got to wonder if Kevin Wallace is going to put the punt block on here. He's got a lot of guys coming strong and only two guys back deep. Set. He gets it away. No pressure coming. A nice booming punt. It's going to take a drag and roll and goes out of bounds without a return at the 30-yard line, but up here at the line of scrimmage, we've got a flag, Lee. Yeah, we sure do on the far side. Uh, that's probably going to be holding. So we'll check that. 30 seconds to go in the second quarter of play. Check that, the third quarter of play. Well, it's been a long night. I know, the excitement just overwhelming <laughs> us both. I'm speechless. You're saying the wrong things. I don't know what's going on. Maybe we should take our shot down there on the sideline. <laughs> here comes the official with the call. The penalty and a legal substitution against Bowling Green. And it, of course, declined. 
Looks like so, uh, number 18, Jay Bradford, a little late getting off the field there. So Bowling Green will take the ball after that booming punt from Daniel Poppy. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. 22 to 30 your score. Bowling Green trying to stay alive and get this thing even in a game that really has been controlled by the Dragons. And there's a whistle. Let's see, no flags thrown yet, but you got to think it's motion somewhere. There's the flag. There's the flag. Apparently, uh, the official got it tucked a little too far in the drawers. <laughs> <laughs> a little trouble getting it out, so false start. We'll back it up five yards. First and 15 now for Bowling Green. That's tough, too, because that puts you back to the 25-yard line. 15 yards to go to get this first down, and Sledge has got to put it in the air a little bit more. The running game has been there for them but they also have to put it in the, in the air, keep that running game going and open up that defense. Well, we saw Aaron Johnson spring free on a big 50-yard touchdown run in the first half. You know the Purples would like to get him going, but it hasn't been there. So far, Warren, since you see the handoff right here, there's some room. There's one. Terrell Green breaks a big gainer for just over 20 yards, exactly what the Purples need. Jack More Weeks. offense. Jack Weeks there on the tackle. Good job by him to keep the coverage down. But a first down, great move there by number 23, uh, Terrell Green, to bust through and get that first down. Sorely needed on that first and 15. Time running out of the third quarter. Nine seconds left. We'll see Bowling Green trying to get this play away. First down on the 47-yard line. Sledge stepping under center and gets it off. Up the middle, Rhodes, not a whole lot that time, about two yards. And that will end our third quarter of play. Your score, 30 to 22. Warren Central leads at Bowling Green, trying to lose to end an eight-game losing streak against the Purples. Yeah, I think uh, Bowling Green showing a lot more resilience here. Resilience here in the second half. If they can get it done, keep the defense going like they had at that possession before. You got to think Bowling Green's still in this. Uh, obviously, you know the score is 30 to 22, only a one-possession game. And uh, Bowling Green still very much alive in this. Remember last week, 41 points on the board. You got to think uh, Bowling Green still uh, very much, uh, very much in this game, and they know it too. There's very strong up front on defense, getting the offense rolling right there, as you saw. Uh, Going to come back with about four yards to go on the first down. It will be second and about four when we get started again, as you just mentioned. For Bowling Green, this is a big game for them. Of course, they don't want to drop a second loss, and they surely don't want to lose to the Dragons. What do they need to do offensively now to get the ball back in the end zone? I, th I think you're gonna see, you need to see a little more balance out of Sledge. I think he's got to put it in the air a little bit more than he has in the first half and in the third quarter, uh, and you also need to establish the rushing game. I think they've done that so far tonight. Uh, Warren Central having to stay on their toes uh, as the uh, great running from uh, both Sledge and uh, the running backs, Johnson and Green, have uh, proved the uh, positive yardage here. We're going to see right here with about four yards to go. Fourth quarter set to get underway at E.L. Donaldson Stadium. Bowling Green trailing Warren Central 30-22. to Kyle Sledge under center for the Purples on second down. Hands off up the middle. Absolutely not. Brandon Lamberson says, not in my house, big fella. Not in my house. And Casey died right there on the pressure on Sledge in case he wanted to keep the ball. Die telling him, uh-uh, not in my house either. So it'll be third and seven. Bowling Green really needs to convert here. Are they in two-down territory? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Where it's only the fourth quarter, I mean, there's still plenty of time to go, but Wallace is a real gutsy coach. We'll see. Sledge dropping back to pass. Now he's going to scramble. Throwing across the middle. Has a man almost picked off. Desmond Harris had his eyes on that one and just stepped in front of Aaron Johnson and knocked it away. Good defense. I tell you what, Harris has come off the field a couple times because maybe he got winded, maybe he's got a couple cramps. He could have fooled me. He had all kinds of wheels right there moving in for the pick. And that bring up fourth down and make a punt possible. Yep, we get the answer now from Kevin Wallace. He's going to punt the ball and hope that his defense can shut down this Warren Central offense that has really just moved the ball at will tonight with the exception of the last drive. Oh, yeah, he's still got seven yards to go here. You definitely have to punt. 
Uh, let's see what Warren Central can do with it, try and get the momentum back on their side. So Matt Hardenberg. Oh, it's a fake. A fake to Aaron Johnson. Johnson looking to get the first down, and he's going to be short. Shane Green snuffed it out and stepped up and stops the man about four yards short of the first down. Good effort from Aaron Johnson, but a better effort from Shane Green to step up and make the stop. I got to tell you, Dan, earlier we were talking MVP, Casey Dow, obviously up there, uh, definitely Gabe Forster. You pretty much have to give it to the entire team. I don't think you can give it to one person. Right there you see great special teams defense. I'm not sure if uh, Bowling Green can get anything past these guys. Great job there by... Uh, uh, Warren Central to snuff out the uh, the fake punt. So Forrester goes back to work at his own 46-yard line, and now you got to think they're going to just grind it out. Green, who just made the last stop, gets the carry, and Bowling Green all over the run. Do you think now Warren Central has to maybe go with a little play action and open up things for the pass? Oh, definitely. Great job on the tackle there by Terrell Green as he wasn't thinking pass at all. He knew exactly where the ball was going, did a great job on the tackle, and I think if uh, you're Warren Central, you definitely have to put the ball in the air in order to stay in this game. So often you see a team that's led virtually an entire game get toward the end of the third quarter and fourth quarter and start getting really conservative, and it ends up costing them. The Dragons, of course, trying to avoid that fate. And now Desmond Harris going to get the carry, breaks through the line, past the secondary, Aaron Johnson. Returning the favor from a minute ago, Johnson stopped by Harris this time. Harris stopped by Johnson, but not before. Desmond Harris picks up a good 25 yards, and Warren Central moving ever closer to that end zone. Just as we say, you know, they need to open up the passing game. Harris, or, yes. Aaron Johnson? Aaron, no. Desmond Harris did a okay. great job breaking the run open. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's been the whole case for Warren Central tonight. They haven't needed to go to the air as much as maybe Bowling Green has had to. Harris and uh, Green both doing a great job breaking the open runs. Out of the eye formation, Forrester fakes the pitch again. Now he's going up the middle, and he's got 15 yards. That play has been so effective all night long for Warren Central. Yeah, it sure has. They may as well start calling it the purple killer because that's what it's done. Every time Forrester runs the fake, he picks up yardage. Forrester's got to be getting close to the 100-yard rushing mark. He's played a magnificent game in leading his team to this 30-22 lead. Ten minutes left in the ball game, folks. Don't go anywhere. It doesn't get much better than this. Warren Central driving, trying to put an end to an eight-game losing streak. The pitch outside, Desmond Harris. Harris has the first down and more. Harris making a push to the end zone, gets pulled down about the four-yard line. First and goal, Dragons. Very tough play right there. Doing a great job leading his blockers and making it as far as he could. Uh, Harris doing a good job, and once again we see Warren Central being really strong when he gets inside their own 20. And, Lee, I just noticed Casey Dye, when he got back to the huddle, kind of reached down and grabbed his hand. Might have got a finger stepped on or something, but he's going to stay in there. He's a tough fella, and he knows his team needs to get this one in the end zone. The Dragons out of the eye formation. Snap gives it off to Shane Green. Green up the middle, gets about two, and it'll be second down and about one to go. Check that, he got the first down. He got a first down, so it'll be first and goal. Great job there by Desmond Harris to realize that he needed to get the first down, dove for that extra yardage and picked it up. Now it's first and goal from the two yard line, four downs to get it two yards. Earlier we saw Bowling Green with really strong defense up front. We'll see right here what we can do. Bowling Green's been trying to climb out of the coffin. Warren Central trying to drive that nail back in. The leap, he's up, he's in. Touchdown, Shane Green. Warren Central pulls back out in front, 36-22, to with an extra point coming. Big touchdown, great surge from the offensive line. Dan, I can't, express, I can't stress that enough. The whole offensive line doing a great job. Left side, middle side, right side, everywhere. Everybody doing a great job. Green really had no trouble getting it up and over that line. I can't say enough, this whole team deserves the MVP. Everybody deserves a game ball. Warren Central showing a lot of heart. They've had an answer for every Bowling Green score tonight. 
And Daniel Poppy tacks on the extra point. 37 to 22, your score. A 15 point lead for Warren Central. Nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And I tell you, Dan, that extra, that two point conversion that they converted really uh, proved, uh, proved pointless right here. Still a two plus possession, or a two possession game. They're gonna have to go for two both times if they expect to win here. Bowling Green, I mean. Well, Lee, what a treat for us. This is our first game of the new season. And if we get games like this all year, we'll be happy men. Because yeah, I'll it definitely doesn't be get happy much game. better in high school ball than this. I mean, it has been a hard fought game from both sides. Warren Sets are really displaying a lot of heart and will and desire to win this game. I gotta tell you, Dan, you also have to appreciate the fan support. Both both sets of fans coming out in uh, numbers is with it's a hugely packed crowd. You got standing room only on the other side to watch this great football game. Yeah, people spread all the way across the field. And the squib kit picked up by Clint Eakins. And Eagles fumbles the ball. Wait and see what happens. Looks like Bowling Green picked it back up. Eccles had a little trouble hanging on to it and then had a little more trouble hanging on to it, but Johnson recovers for Bowling Green. Once again, the first of many great games to come your way this year on Insight Communications High School Football. Games you can catch at this time every night, Monday at 8.30. Of course, next week we'll be at Greenwood. Warren East coming in for a big inter-county showdown there. Kyle Sled's going to step back in the shotgun now. you got to think they're trying to air it out. It's time to pass it. Sled scrambling, tucks it away. Nowhere to go. Now still looking for some room. And that Dragon defense has just been there to slay him down every time. Another great, great showing by the Dragon defense, showing more versatility Great coverage in the secondary, as we haven't seen much uh, tonight with uh, this the first time uh, Sledge being in the shotgun. You have to admire the heart of Kyle Sledge here. We saw him a moment ago on the two-point conversion, got injured. On that play, came up a little gimpy. He's not going anywhere, folks. This is his team. He wants this win. He's staying there, and he doesn't want anyone else quarterbacking. Sledge now goes under center, puts a man in motion, fakes the handoff, dropping back to pass. Sledge again, nowhere to go, and he gets sacked. The Warren Central secondary giving him no options, covered tight on those receivers. No option but to take the sack. Nice defense once again. Great job there by number 40, Kevin Fishburn, the 5'9", 170-pound senior, giving, Fish, or giving Sledge all kinds of fits. You're going to have to get back in that shotgun, get the ball off in order to gain yardage here. You can't just keep running the ball around because we've already seen tonight Warren Central too fast to uh, be outrun here from uh, side to side. Third and 15 for Bowling Green. They have to get a conversion or this one's pretty much over. Seven minutes left to go in the game. Sledge dropping back to pass. Now fires across the middle. Aaron Johnson, no signal yet if it was complete. And yes, they will catch it. They will call that ball a complete pass. So Aaron Johnson picks up the reception. Bowling Green still alive. It'll be fourth down and four to go. Sledge and Cruz staying on the field. Kevin Willis thinking first down here all the way. Sound like the Warren East fans didn't appreciate that call, but it looked pretty good. Looked like a good, strong catch there by Mr. Johnson. And here we see fourth and about three to go. Fourth down, big play. Warren Central putting five guys up on the line of scrimmage. The handoff, pitch it out. Rhodes, Rhodes to the outside. He's got the first down and more. Cal Sledge with another magnificent fake inside. We thought he was going to give the ball to Terrell Green. Instead, pitched it outside to Rhodes, and Rhodes able to pick up the first down and keep the Purples alive. That's a one big thing Sledge brings to this offense. He's not afraid to take the hit when the option comes. Knows exactly when to get that pitch off, as we've seen tonight. Only one bobble there by Rhodes earlier in the game. Sledge will go to the shotgun now. Three receivers to the near side of the field. Dropping back. There's Look who it is. <laughs> Casey Dye in his face, making him scramble. Now he's got nowhere to go. He gets sacked. Great pursuit that time and coverage. Nick Conley coming up for the big sack. And, Dan, I'm not exactly sure why Sledge didn't try and get rid of that. He was well outside the pocket, 
All he had to do was throw it to the sideline. Instead, he loses about 10, 11 yards on that play. I'm not sure what was going through his head. I'm sure he just wanted to get the completion. But uh, you got to throw that ball away, get back to the line of scrimmage, and uh, try it again. Second down and 20. Bowling Green up to the line quickly. Five minutes and 45 seconds to go. Now they need to get this ball to the end zone in a hurry. Sled stepping back. Aaron Johnson, Johnson looking to go downfield again. He's got a man, and this time it's caught. There he goes. John Moore puts the move, and he's going to go into the end zone. I don't see any flags on the field. Touchdown, Bowling Green. And that time, John Moore, stepping right in front of Anthony Rhodes, picks the pass up and goes in from 53 yards for the touchdown. Great job there by John Moore, showing the speed, showing the jukes as he put a great move on the Warren Central secondary to waltz into the uh, end zone, and they did exactly what you asked them to do, get in the end zone and quick. Another official timeout. Well, now Warren Central's going to take a timeout. Initial indication, the officials were going to call a timeout. Now Warren Central takes one. So Bowling Green strikes quickly when they needed to, 37 to 28. It appears that Kevin Wallace and his crew are going to go for two, trying to make this a seven-point game. Dan, that's exact. Dan, that's exactly what you have to do. If your team can get two here, you know it's a one-possession game to tie up or win. You have to go for two. You got to know if you can get there. If not, it goes back to a two-possession game, and it's a whole different ball game. So if you're Kevin Wallace, you definitely try and put it in the end zone. Although I'm not sure how with the recent passing attack that uh, Bowling Green has displayed. Well, we've talked so much about the heart and desire of Warren Central in this game. How much they've displayed the will to want to win. But credit Bowling Green here. They had the opportunity to roll over and go away. And they've done everything but. They've clawed and fought their way back into this. They trail by nine with a two-point conversion attempt coming. If they get this, it's a one-touchdown game. Sledge, stepping under center, going to fake the handoff, now rolling out, tuck it away, going in on his own, he's got it. Yes, sir, Kyle Sledge getting in, much like he did a few minutes ago on the last two-point conversion, giving his body some punishment, but he's in the end zone, and it is 37 to 30, a seven-point game, five minutes, 20 seconds to go. Bowling Green just will not give up. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. Kyle Sledge taking the entire team on his back and putting it in the end zone. Great job there by Sledge to punch it home, and this gives Bowling Green new life. You might even be thinking onside kick right here. I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's still about five minutes to go. Bowling Green could still get a stop, but uh, it, it's getting late in the game, well, so Lee, you might be thinking that. Lee, watching these Purples come off the field after converting that, they are fired up, man. They came over here pumped up. They're turning to the crowd. You could hear you could hear the crowd getting involved. They're ready to keep on playing football, and why not? You're exactly right. They're only down seven. Five minutes is an eternity, especially with your two-minute warning and still plenty of timeouts for both teams. It's high school football. There's not a two-minute oh, yeah. warning. What am I doing? I'm thinking college <laughs> it's football. It's Friday night, not Sunday. On the return, Desmond Harris gets about 10 yards. Warren Central will take it over there. First and 10 on the 30-yard line. Although you never, you could never tell these guys are all playing like pros tonight. It's a great game out here. <laughs> and I'm not used to having such a qualified guy in the booth with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was lying. But anyways, hey, five now. minutes and 23 seconds to go. Warren Central hanging on to a seven-point lead, trying to end an eight-game skid at Bowling Green. A packed house getting the treat, and so are you at home. What an outstanding game to open up the season on. Warren Central coming up to the line. Gabe Forster's played a magnificent game and wants to get this one capped off with the win. Forster going to keep it on his own on that fake pitch again, and he fights and claws his way for 11 yards and a first down. Dave, or Dan, I think this is exactly where you want to run the clock out. You're going to keep the ball on the ground, keep pounding it forward, pounding it forward until you get to third down. That's when you got to know when to pass and when to run. Yeah, and we've mentioned over and over again tonight, Bowling Green has not forced Warren Central into a situation where they've had to punt all night. They've been able to keep the ball on the ground and just ground it out. 
You're exactly right. And they got two great running back, Desmond Harris, Shane Green, doing a great job on the ground. Each of them with touchdowns tonight. You got to wonder here, can Bowling Green hold? Green gets the carry up the middle and comes down after picking up about six yards on the play. Second down and four. You've got to be happy with that on the Warren Central sideline. I got to tell you, the Warren Central running's back, running back coach has to be happy. Every time Warren Central gets hit on the initial pop, they keep their feet moving, they keep going. And right there was exactly, got hit at about two yards in front of the line, kept his feet pumping, and got a couple extra yards. And we'll see right here, it's about second and four now instead of second and six or second and seven. Clock continuing to wind. It is second and four. Warren Central stepping under center. Hand off, Shane Green up the middle again. Same play call. And he's going to be about a yard short of the first down. So it will be third and one. Shane Green just carrying this team on his back. Along with Desmond Harris and Gabe Forrest, they're the big three guys out of that backfield. You can't ask for much more. Yeah, you sure can. Uh, these guys playing out of this world, uh, this game. And uh, they know it was a big game coming in. Bowling Green knows it was a big game coming in. And you're seeing Harrison Green right here step it up, playing on that next level. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go. Gabe Forrester, third and short on the quarterback keeper. I think he got it on the initial push. Of course, he gets pushed in the backfield, but forward progress. He's got the first down. The Dragons able to move the chains and keep working on that clock. Boy, I can't say it enough, Lee. What an outstanding game we've had. It was a little sloppy late in the first quarter. We had a lot of penalties, but both teams in the second half have settled in and really played the football that they're capable of. Yeah, I think both teams want to get out there, get off to initial start, show who had the momentum, who was going to run this game, and it's been pretty even, especially right till now. Warren Central holding that seven-point lead here. Handoff up the middle. Shane Green just fighting his way. He won't give up. There are... What is it, four? Three or four guys from Bowling Green trying to force him to stop. And as you just mentioned, his running backs coach have taught him well. He kept his feet moving and kept fighting for that extra yard. Yeah, you definitely have to credit the, uh, the assistant coaches over there on the Warren Central sideline doing a great job with these guys. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll keep it uh, up to a good game here. We've got second and about six or seven. And uh, we'll see as the clock keeps winding down as we get a timeout from now, the Bowling Green team. A lot of these guys on this Bowling Green defense play both ways, both offense and defense. Warren Central has just been pounding on them all evening long. Is this where it takes effect? I don't think so. I think the adrenaline's got to be running high for both teams. I think uh, fatigue is almost a non-factor here as we see uh, Mr. Terrell Green getting a little uh, stretch, uh, getting ready for the final three minutes of the game. But I think uh, if you're both of these teams, and I know from experience, I mean, the adrenaline's running high for both these teams, cross-town rivals like we've been saying all day. And uh, I think uh, your adrenaline keeps you going here. Uh, you want the win so bad, and, uh, and uh, you just keep fighting. So what does Kel Kevin Wallace tell his team? I think you got to tell his team to stick with it. Be strong up front. Don't let them run too much on you. And uh, try and force that punt at least. Second down, six yards to go. Warren Central looking to run the clock out and cap off a victory. It would be their first over Bowling Green in nine attempts. The pitch, Desmond Harris looking for some running room. Nowhere to go. Bowling Green all over him. Instantly, they get the timeout. So with two minutes and 58 seconds to go, it's going to be third down and seven for Warren Central. Bowling Green trying desperately to get that stop and get the ball back. Dan, what I got is I got to wonder here. I got to think if if uh, the Warren Central sideline wants him to run the ball and punt and see if the Bowling Green offense can get something going, see if he has enough confidence in his uh, dragon defense to stop him. I'm not sure here. I think if uh, you're smart, you keep it on the ground. Don't give them any more time than they need and go ahead and punt it away. But obviously you have to try for the first down no matter what. But I think you keep it on the ground here, keep the ball tucked in real tight, and hopefully either get a first down or punt it deep enough or, war or where Bowling Green has to travel the length of the field. So should we expect Gabe Forrester maybe to run that little fake pitch and try to draw the ball up the middle and get the first down here? I'm done predicting. They never get, I never get it right. 
They always do something that I don't say they do. So, but you know that's we're gonna the, wait and see. That is the beauty of the game, right there. It sure is. You so just, many options for this team to do. You just never know what's gonna happen, and that's what keeps it exciting. Here we go. Three minutes to go. Third and seven for Warren Central. There it is. The fake pitch, and Dave Forrester fighting for the first down. He converts. Warren Central is gonna keep the ball. And I'm going to take the credit on that one, partner. I called it. Good job, Dan. That was exactly what we what you were thinking. And Forrester faked out the entire Bowling Green defense like he's been doing all day. You'd think they'd catch on, but they just slipped it up. They figured it was going to be a pitch to the running back. Forrester did like he's been doing all day, faked the pitch, and turned and do a 180 to the other sideline. Did a great job picking up that first down and there. And once again, give that credit to Todd Kitchens, Jason Rigsby, Philip Myers, those guys in the middle of that offensive line, they've done a great job blocking. As you see Booker right there getting his hand involved, pulling down the runner, and Bowling Green's going to call their final timeout here. Second down to 10, 2 minutes, 23 seconds to go. Bowling Green now out of timeouts. They need to get a stop desperately. Oh, definitely, and you got to think that uh... – Warren Central will be putting the ball on the ground. I don't think you're going to see him uh, put it in the air. And if they do, it'll be a short dump pass. It won't be anything long. And I think Bowling Green's going to have to step it up. They're going to have to play in that whole other level and hopefully get the ball back uh, with at least a minute and a half or so uh, to get the ball down the field. Outstanding football game to open up our season right here on Insight Cable. I'm Dan Gaddy alongside Lee Handel. Two minutes, 23 seconds to go at E.L. Donaldson Field. What a magnificent game on a beautiful night for football. Couldn't have asked for a better setup for this game. So Warren Central taking their time, thinking this one over. They want to make sure that they don't turn the ball over. If there's one thing that you have to be saying in that huddle, is keep the ball in our possession. Yeah, you've seen enough times on uh, on other various games where people fumble the ball away with the last second, team throw towards the sidelines and march down to get a touchdown. You've got to hold on to the ball here. Second and ten. Forrester steps under center, trying to draw Bowling Green's offsides. Going with the hard count, now burning up some time under there. And doesn't get him offsides and calls a timeout. But guess what? They don't have any timeouts. I was wondering what was going on there. Warren Central had already burned up their timeouts. So they will take the penalty for delay of game. Marks off five yards. Second down and 15. Now. I, th I think that was all part of the play. I think he just wanted to get them to draw them off sides and uh, just trying to burn a little bit of, or as much as the clock as possible. Uh, good plan over there from the Warren Central sidelines. And uh, it'll be on the ground again. I guarantee it this time. I'm going to go ahead and predict it's going to be on the ground. Second and 15, Forrester hands off up the middle. Desmond Harris goes for about six. See, Dan, I'm never wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be third down and nine now. It's the clock approaching the two-minute mark. Where Warren Central just doing all they can to make that clock run. You know every second that passes by over there for Ricky Wood is a long one. Oh yeah, it sure is. I think uh, Coach Wallace has to be wanting the this the ball back really bad. Uh, you're gonna have to see Booker and and Ches Brinkley step up there in the middle. Uh, you got to run as much clock time as you can, and we'll see what it, uh, Desmond he does Harris here. in the backfield. Forrester fakes the handoff. Bowling Green all bubble, over bubble. that time. Nope, nope. The officials marking down. The officials marking down. Good call. Very good call on that play by the officials. So you see uh, Warren Central trying the little pitch, fake pitch again, and, and that time Bowling Green able to snuff it out. Great job there by the Bowling Green defense. We're not denied, and, but the clock keeps rolling. The clock keeps rolling. Fourth down. And really, at this point on the field, you're at the 33-yard line. You're almost too far to kick a field goal and too close to punt. So why not go for it? With a minute left, Warren Central is going to try to convert, and if they do, they've pretty much put an end on this game. Yeah, they sure have. Get out the big hammer for that nail in the coffin. Fourth and six. Here's your game, and we've got a flag. 
Warren Central apparently has took too long to get up there to the line of scrimmage. And yes, that is exactly what it is. Another delay of game penalty. That makes it fourth and 11. And now you gotta think Ricky Wood is gonna bring on the punting unit, and he does. Yeah, that was a good play. Just give him enough room to punt it where it stays in bounds, make him run more time off the clock. Good idea there by Coach Wood to, uh, to run more time off the clock. So Daniel Poppy will punt it away, and Aaron Johnson will drop deep for Bowling Green. Boy, what a finish if he can break one and go the distance here. There's the snap. Bowling Green coming. Now they're going to drop off and play coverage. Johnson's going to let it go, and that one gets in the end zone. So here we go, partner. There are 49 seconds left to play. Bowling Green is down by seven, and they have the ball with 80 yards to go. I got to tell you, one guy whose name we haven't called except for one big time is wide receiver speedster Johnny Moore. He broke a huge touchdown on that halfback throw, and you got to be looking his way. Outstanding speed, did a great job burning the secondary, and Bo or Warren Central has to be coming out in the prevent because Sledge is going to come out throwing. Sledge, we've seen him go in the shotgun a couple times in this half. He's going to step up under center this time. Warren Central with the four-man front. Sledge does drop back to pass. Now he's got to schedule, not to scramble a little bit. Casey Dye hot on his tail. Sledge still scrambling, just looking for some place to go. And they get him. He goes down. He's sacked at the 10-yard line. Great pursuit and good pressure from Warren Central. Clock still rolling. 27 seconds to go. Sledge wanting to spike the ball here. Sledge drops under center. Yes, he does spike it, so it'll be third down and 19 to go. That's trouble for Bowling Green. Dan, I'm not sure if that's the second time tonight I've seen him do that, try and scam, scramble and get the ball off. If you throw it away, you still only have 10 yards to get to the first down. You've got to throw it towards the sidelines or throw it away. As he kept scrambling, time kept rolling off that clock. Well, regardless of how it winds up, we've had a great one tonight. And Lee and I just want to take a moment and thank our production crew, Robbie, Troy, Rachel, Sarah, Philip, and of course, Cheryl Morris down in the truck directing everything that you see. You guys do a magnificent job. And if I've left anyone out or mispronounced anyone's name, I do apologize. I appreciate it. You guys make it all happen. Third and 20 to go. Bowling Green dropping, looking to pass now. Sledge gets sacked again. Warren Central defense coming up huge. Ryan Rigsby with the sack. So it's fourth down now. There's seven seconds left. I don't know if they're going to get another playoff. Five, now four. And we've stopped the clock. Why The officials have stopped the clock. Brad Booker is down. Brad Booker apparently injured. There's two seconds, three seconds left. The Warren Central students are actually on the field. They're ready to storm this field as soon as this one's over. Apparently, the eight-game losing streak will end, but Bowling Green is going to get a chance to get another playoff. It's fourth down and 20. They have 96 yards to go. But, Dan, i got to tell you, if Booker's really injured badly, that could have more repercussions than we know right now other than the game right here. Booker is a great player, and he's coming off the field under his own strength. But you got to wonder if Booker's hurt badly, that could hurt Bowling Green even well, more. Sledge, Sledge stepped under and snapped the ball, but Booker, as you see right there, is still walking off the field. So we're going to line it up and try it again. Three seconds to go. Bowling Green praying for a miracle here. Nothing other than the Hail Mary pass coming. Sledge out of his own end zone. He's got plenty of time, and now he launches it, and it's picked off. This one's over. It's picked off. There's the tackle. The game ends, and you see it right there. Warren Central fired up. They have done it. They came in here, underdogs, and leave with a win over Bowling Green. 37-30, to 30, your final lead. What an outstanding game. What a great game, and right there, Nick Conley, the sophomore, picking off Sledge's final pass. And Bowling Green has got to be stunned. They came in highly rated on, on this team, only losing to a very talented 4A power PRP. And, and Warren Central just came in with more heart tonight. 
I think they wanted this game a little bit more than Bowling Green did. They did a great job of, of slowing down uh, Brad Booker. And we can't say enough about Harris Green and uh, Gabe Forster, the quarterback. So that's the way it ends, 37 to 30. Warren Central upsets Bowling Green tonight, if you want to call it an upset, but they did have an eight game losing streak. The Dragons win, Lee, excellent game. I appreciate it, it was fun to work with you. We'll be at Greenwood next week for Warren East and Greenwood right here on Inside Cable. This has been our opener and it doesn't get much better. For Lee Handel, I'm Dan Gaddy. Good evening.